I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? They ain't believing me in the beginning. Who wanna hang around now they see me winning? I'm home court, she's standing trial. Why ain't I see you round back when I was down? What's up, world? This your boy, Big Court, from the Holding Court Podcast. You already know what it is. And today's episode is sponsored by Manyati. Yeah, so this is my big brother, Master P. Shoe. This is high fashion, high class. Um, this is really a, a great product, a real sturdy shoe. Actually, I, I own probably a dozen of these. Um, my favorites are the Leopards, you know what I mean? A little style. So they got something for everybody. You want sports, basketball, leisure, casual, whatever it is. Uh, Magnati.com, Italian made shoes, but black owned. So go to Magnati.com. You already know what it is. It's no limit to your success. What's up, world? It's your boy, Big Court, here on the Holding Court podcast. And today, we have a very, very special guest, and I'm, I don't say that lightly. I know uh, I say that with most guests that we have, and I meant it with all the other guests. You did. But Producer Ken, you already know. You know what I'm saying? It's legend, um, legend. Anybody there. that knows me personally, they already know, you know, how I feel about this this man, this this icon, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the epitome of longevity, of gangsterism, of class, of all of that. Uh, longest running show, uh, uh, SVU, yeah. Law and Order. Uh, how many records you have sold to date? I have no idea. I mean, back in the day, I sold 20 million. So okay. I've sold a few. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. He sold a few <laughs> records. Yeah. And and not only in rap, but also in rock. You know yeah. what I mean? So the incomparable OG, double OG himself, Ice T. What's up, Sir. what's up, Court? What's going on with you, OG? I'm, I'm, I'm glad we were able to make this happen. You know, Absolutely. we might as well identify the elephant in the room we're in arizona yes you know uh you had gotten at me when i was in new jersey mm -hmm. and i said well i'm not in la that often anymore uh i said i'll be in az you said i'll come to az right and hook up with you yeah. you know so i said well you know let's do it then you said i'll fly out yeah. and so we're here so you know it, it was a we had to agree that like we're gonna make this happen, and it only would have happened because you really wanted it to happen. Absolutely, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we are, and uh, it's an honor to meet you. Mm -hmm. I've been following you, you know, for years. I know that you've been mo doing movies, you and Master P's camp, mm -hmm. and all that. So I was like, okay, you know, I don't do interviews with everybody because a lot of people are just, I don't know, they just want they're. We're in a world right now where everybody is a blogger right. and now everybody's a podcaster. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like it dilutes the conversation when you're just talking to every damn body. Absolutely. You know, so I try to make sure I'm talking to official people yeah. so that the, the podcast is official, the questions are official, and we make mm -hmm. some progress. Exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> well, you're the second that. person. Does, Jay Prince said the same yep. thing. Yep. Which is what I told you. I told you top shelf players work in the realm. We all Ooh. think like the same thing. Yeah. And it's not like you just want to be a, it's like I did a I did an interview with Howard Stern mm -hmm. and I refused to talk to Howard Stern for years and years and years because I know Howard Stern's will disrespect you. Mm -hmm. He'll he'll say some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And I'll come over to desk on Howard Stern. So I was like <laughs> But he 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 said he wanted to do a real interview with me, and uh, it was going to help promote Body Count's album. And uh, I went in there. I had one of the best interviews with Howard Stern because Howard Stern takes his time. I learned he 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 knows stuff about you. He mm -hmm. takes his he does his his work. Mm -hmm. So the questions are unique and not simple. Right. And that's appreciated, mm -hmm. you know. And if you Google the Howard Stern Ice T interview, it came off really well. And I didn't expect that. Yeah. But I told Howard out the gate, I'm like, come on, man. Because Howard will just go left. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll and say still, some incendiary shit. But yeah. what I did learn about Howard Stern is if he respects you, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a respectful interview. Mm -hmm. If he thinks you need him, <laughs> he's going to give you the give you the business because yeah. he's like you're on my show trying to become somebody right. so until you really make it and he feels 
we're on a level playing field. You are a real artist. You're somebody that deter that deserves respect. You get it. So that's what I used to see Howard Stern have strippers eating food out of dog bowls and shit wow. like that. I was like, yo, this dude is ill. He do that shit for shock value too. Yeah, but he but his whole thing is like, okay, you need my platform, right, so right. here we go. Right. I'm gonna hit you with a water balloon or whatever, <laughs> whatever he wanted to. He, Cause he calmed down over the years though, because he was he was wild, wild at the beginning. Yeah. We've all calmed down over yeah. the years. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, so the thing about it is so funny that you say that because even with my platform, I built it on the premise of uh, you know, uh documenting the journey of the OGs and respectable people, you know. And uh in particular, like with you and Jay Prince, these are my whole thing. For one, it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not even really an interview, a mm -hmm. little bit, but sit down. Yeah, sit down, you know. But these is questions and shit I've been wanting to say to you since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for me, it's a little bit different. You know, I'm kind of going back to that 12, 13 year old kid just looking at, uh, you know, again, the first record I ever heard, the first gangster record, rap record I ever heard was Squeeze the Trigger, mm -hmm. you know, and that was what, about 86, 87, I think off Ryan Pays. Mm -hmm. You know, prior to that, I had only heard, you know, the Fat Boys and, and Run DMC and kind of those kind of acts. You know, you were my introduction into gangster rap. Right. And it literally piqued my interest and turned me out from there. I was like, oh, shit, what's that? You know what I mean? But so we going back to to that for me. You know what I mean? But I want to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so you originally from Jersey. Yeah, I was born in Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I uh, My family moved to Summit, New Jersey, which is a... a more upscale suburb. Mm -hmm. There was like one black street in Summit, William Street, that mostly all the black people in that town lived on. I went to Brayton Elementary School, Summit Junior High. Uh, in the third grade, I lost my mother. My mother died to a heart attack. Um, and then I lived with my father and a housekeeper named Miss Sinoni who took care of me. Uh, my father was a working man. Uh, he worked at a place called Rapid Stand. He fixed conveyor belts. It was different because at night he dressed like a player. Yeah. So he was like everybody, all black people know that guy that, you know, go to, they got a square job, but at night you swear to God they're a pimp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, <laughs> they dressed up. You know, that was yeah. my dad. My yeah. dad but was. But your dad was a square though. Huh? He was, he was, he was a square. Okay. During the day. Yeah. Oh, okay. At night, he would go to the pool hall and yeah. put on his clothes. So, before, yeah. so he had money, okay. you know, but. I, I, I would watch him get dressed and get sharp and stuff. And now since my mom had passed, I remember, you know, he I, he used to have to take me on dates uh, and he would pull up and he would go get White Castle mm -hmm. and throw him in the back seat and then leave me in the car while he would go up with every, whatever chick, <laughs> do his little number or whatever yeah. like that. And uh, uh, I remember he used to come back. Would, he'd be gone a couple hours and stuff and then he'd come back. And then my dad says, I was like, like you say, don't take a long time if you do it right. <laughs> <laughs> See, OG, you just gave me some tips. I'm divorced. And I got two boys, so I just pull up, get yeah. some White Castle, <laughs> throw them in the back. You can't. I mean, a lot of stuff you do, my my dad would do. You end yeah. up in child services now if you wow. get, you can't yeah, do yeah, some yeah, of that it's stuff. A time okay. It's a different time. Oh, hold on. But, so don't do that. No, don't do that. But my dad was 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 uh a good hard working man and uh I never really had any problems with my father. Uh he never hit me. He hit me once. Um I was right right before he passed. I was I think going into 7th grade and he would be working at night. He would say, "Well, when you come home, do this before you go out cuz you know, in the summertime you can go out to 9, 10 right. out after but he wanted me to do my homework." Like, yeah. I thought I thought for this day I was going to say some fly shit to him, you know. And we were sitting at a at a breakfast table and I said something. And in one swoop move, I stood up and he stood up. And when he stood up, he stepped in front of me and he hit me. Boom, he hit me in my solar plexus. Mm -hmm. Now, I had never been hit in my solar plexus before. So if you have you ever been hit, it feels like I electrical have. shocks go through. Yeah. I thought this nigga had superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I never been hit where I felt electricity. How so old were you? I was, I was like, what, 11 years old? Okay. Yeah. And he put me on my ass. And uh, I'm laying there and he looks over me and he said, you talk shit to me when you can whoop me. 
<laughs> that's all my that's all the discipline my father ever had wow. to put into me. Wow. Do. At that point, I, when I would come home and he'd be reading the paper, I would creep past the nigga yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, he put that respect in your in your mind. Quick. Yeah. And uh at seven seventh grade he passed. Mm. And uh uh I, I um I was in high school, like junior high, and I went in that, that principal's office and uh, all the adults had that face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And my, my mind was like, what's gonna happen? When my mother died, I didn't cry, I was in a warp. I was like, what's gonna happen to me? And then when my, my father passed, and see back in them days when a parent would pass, you as a kid, you just all of a sudden move over to an aunt and you don't see the funerals and all that kind of stuff. They just kind of isolate you, right? you know? So I, my father, same way. So I ended up getting shipped to Los Angeles to live with my father's sister. How did your father pass? Heart attack. Wow. Okay. Heart attack. So it's been written, car accident, yeah. gunplay. Nah, heart. Both of them died of natural causes. Too Were young. they young? Uh, my mother was 45. My Damn. father was 55. Wow. Yeah. 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 I get shipped to Los Angeles to live with my aunt. And uh, that was kind of a culture shock. That was my father's sister. Mm -hmm. And she had two sons that had already graduated high school. So here I come, a little seventh grader, and I'm moving into this household. And my aunt was a a, a social worker mm. slash alcoholic. Like wow. she would, she was the person who would determine where where foster kids should be. Then she would come home at night and drink a pint of gin. Damn. So I was unhappy in that that scenario. I went to junior high at Palms Junior High, which was bust from View Park. And then I decided I wanted to go to Crenshaw High School when I hit high school. And that's when the ice tea trajectory really yeah. started because here you got a kid from New Jersey slash a nice neighborhood of L LA and bam, gangs. So View Park is, for those who don't know, that's 60s territory right there on Slauson. But it wasn't 60s then. Okay. View Park was the nice upper class black neighborhood. See, in Crinch and in, 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 in 60s, you have front hood and back hood. Mm. The, the, uh, the, uh, I, I, I'm probably wrong now, but. I think the hills are the back hood. Okay. You're so, talking about Baldwin Hills? Well, no, no. Well, you're talking about up Slauson okay. where Nipsey okay. and them. That's back hood. Okay. And, and front hood is down on the flat ground. Mm -hmm. Now, the six O's is about to crucify me because I just said that backwards. Yeah. But just think, <laughs> you, got, you got front hood and back yeah. hood. Yeah. When I was living up in Angeles Vista in those hills, there weren't no rolling 60 mm -hmm. gangs. The okay. gang was just on the flat ground. Gotcha. gotcha. Right? You know, uh, um, down, down, uh, you know, in the avenues, mm -hmm. so to speak, around Crenshaw High School. Gotcha. So anyway, uh, I decided to walk to Crenshaw, and um, at that time they had bishops, they had bounty hunters, they they had blint, no, not bounty hunters, they had bishops, they had Vanus Brims, they had family, which was from Inglewood, yeah, and they had basically Crips, meaning they had Harlem Crips, which are thirties. They had 60 Crips. They had Hoover Crips. So at that time, Eight trade had, had the had the the um, bounties, the bounty hunters, and all them had they identified as Bloods at that point? At that, see, everything when I started, when I I'm 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 old, right? right so right. I graduated out of Crenshaw High School in '76. So you're oh. talking about 1973. Mm -hmm. This is the era of Tookie. Right. This is the era of Jamel. This is the era of you know, <clears throat> Batman and the old big super Gs. Yeah. This is before people were shooting guns right. as much. You had everyone looked like you. Yeah. And they yeah. would knock you out. Yeah. That was because <laughs> yeah, you had Craig Munson too. Yeah. Yeah. The gangbangers yeah. were big. Yeah. They were like super superheroes mm -hmm. walking around on swole. So um at that time the bloods weren't even referring to themselves as bloods. They referred to themselves as brims. See let me give you a quick br gang breakdown for people since I am an L.A. nigga. See, anything that's not a crip is a blood by default. Mm -hmm. So everything that's a crip will follow its name with crip, whether it's block crip, a trade gangster crip, Hoover crip, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, Playboy gangster crips, mm -hmm. crip, crip, Harlem crip. <clears throat> Bloods are Athens Park boys, mm -hmm. Denver Lanes, Bounty Hunter, 
Inglewood family. They don't follow their names with blood. They're right. just different gangs. Now, anything that's not a, a, a crip is a blood by default, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it gets complicated, yeah. but yeah. It's, it, it is what it is. Now, all those blood mm -hmm. gangs aren't friends. They right. don't all connect. And when the 80s hit and the crack came, the Crip gang splintered to where they're not friends. Right. Now you've got Hoovers who aren't Crips or blood. They're just Hoover. Mm. So it gets complicated as hell. So is it true? I'm sorry, OG. Is it true that the bloods kind of formed just as a as a response? Because I know the Crips started yes. and, uh, to the bullying. They were like, look. As a response finished. to a super gang. Right. So basically, we not, no, we doing our own thing. You yeah. Know what I'm okay. Yeah, you, it was just a super gang. You got a Crips, you know, which were just so powerful. Mm -hmm. There had to be something to go against it. Right, right. So they just started to form blood sets mm -hmm. to the point where they're just as powerful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, me, here I go. I'm coming into Crenshaw High School. Yeah. I can't join a gang because I'm not really from none of these particular neighborhoods. Mm. And then early I realized, well, if you join one of these gangs, you just turn the rest of the city as an enemy. Right. Now, if you live in one of those hoods, if you live in ETG hood, well, you've got the ETGs to surround you, but I'm living in another neighborhood. So right. if I come to Crenshaw and gang bang, who am I really with? Yeah. So what happened was <laughs> there was three brothers from, uh, from a, my neighborhood that would go to Crenshaw, one named Gary Burnett, my buddy Franzel, and myself. We convinced them niggas at Crenshaw that we had a gang. We convinced them that we were the EPA, the Eliminators Pimping Association, <laughs> right? So we yeah. had them believe, and there was more of us. Yeah. And that kept niggas off our bumper to an extent. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I early became cool with Harlem. Mm -hmm. Early became cool with A Trey. And I was able to be cool with A Trey's while they fighting sixties. Right. So I learned people say, Well, Ice, you know, you wasn't in no gang. How you I say, look, being in a gang doesn't make you gangsters. It's just like like that's just a form of it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I had to learn how to coexist amongst all that shit. So then, you know, as I got older, you know, I said, we stopped even dressing like that. We start wearing feelers, yeah. perm, our hair. We players now. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going into bloodstone villainhood, right. chasing hoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm in the Pueblos, in deep blood territory. Yeah. But see, the gangbangers recognize the players. Mm -hmm. They like, okay, you ain't a banger, you a player. Yeah. And they, 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 bangers are looking for the enemy. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. They, so you give them, hey, they say, hey, yeah, they bang on you. Hey, no, man, I, hey, man, I'm not banging, man. Yeah. You know, I'm over here trying to get some money. All right, they'll just bang on. Yeah, nigga, this is, yeah, this is bloodstone villain yeah. blood. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> and you just keep it moving. Yeah. I'd have been banged on a few times at the Sloss. You got the meet. same, you yeah. got the same problem. Yeah. Because you get, you get the Crip card put on you all the time. But, all the time. But, but, but they looking for him to bang back. If he don't, yeah. then it's nothing to it. They, yo, nigga, this whoop, whoop, whoop. And it's okay, cool. Yeah. And, it's you guys got to learn. Yeah, you got to learn how to navigate that. I mean, even <laughs> out here, you know, I, w I went to Slauson. Well, where I'm from in Kansas, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Right. Growing up, I'm from a neighborhood called Faux Block, mm -hmm. two C's. And also, uh, I used to run with a crew called Southside Posse, Crip Set. Mm -hmm. So by affiliation, right? because <laughs> we be laugh about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crip and Ass Court. And I used to be like, where the fuck they get that from? Because I've never banged on anybody. Right. You know, uh, I know you like to argue that point, but I have right. it. You know right. what I'm saying? So a lot of times you get sucked into it just by affiliation. Yeah. But it seemed like you were a lot more, you had a little more finesse. Where Not really. You, I, I mean, I, I could get, I, I mean, I just just what school I went to, you a crib. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you could get caught out of bounds and get mm -hmm. banged on. You know what I'm saying? I, a lot of my friends, I mean, I just knew all the right people. Yeah. Let's put it like this. I knew the right people. I knew the big cats from Harlem. I know the big cats. I know everybody. And then when we started becoming, and I, I like you say, I navigated high school. Mm -hmm. I was actually dancing in high school. We were in a group like the Lockers. Okay. So I was dancing. I'm making rhymes for the gangs. And um, uh, I was doing whatever it took. Yeah. Did you have, <laughs> did you have any run-ins with Tookie? You ever come across him? Yeah. Did you? What was that like? Because everybody got... 
you know, they horror story or they time they got punked out by Tookie. So I got a story with Tookie. I knew I see. I would see Tookie almost every weekend when we would go out because mm-hmm. Tookie and them would be. They would just walk up on the stage and start posing and have niggas rubbing oil on them and shit. And they would just start <laughs> posing and shit right in the middle of a concert, like Damn. just step on the stage and they had and motherfuckers wasn't saying shit because Tookie was a monster. Yeah. So. Him, Jamel, they would they would always be out. But uh, my situation with Tookie, uh, I, th- I I said it in, in the TV show uh, Gangland. Uh, I had a girlfriend, and I was living on Twenty Fourth Street, and uh, um, my daughter's mother, and we had a little apartment at the time, and I was in there buffing. I'm I'm on swole, so I'm thinking I'm on swole. I'm in there. <sighs> so then she goes out on the front porch, so she comes back in. There's some niggas out here, they disrespectful, this, that, and the third, you know, like that. Now, Court will tell you, once you finish a set, you feel like you feel like God. We, oh, yeah, you got you, that pump. You, you got that dumb. pump. You like, what? Right. Who? So I fall out. <laughs> <laughs> I ran outside. It was Tookie. <laughs> <laughs> it was Tookie sitting in a low rider with, I think, probably barefoot pookie and some other nondescript murdering looking niggas. And they were in a yellow low rider, like a five. Right, convertible sitting there, and Took used to wear his hat, like his hair, like in a pompano with like a scarf tone, and it would be. be and I looked out, and I seen them niggas. I'm like, ah, that's Tookie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ran back in the house. I said, bitch, why you got that shit on anyway? Why you dress- <laughs> why, put on some clothes? <laughs> you trying to get me killed? <laughs> you know? So, so you, yeah. You respected Tookie's gangster. You knew what's getting done. I don't know. The whole, listen, listen. <laughs> if you wasn't finna shoot Tookie. Yeah. You was gonna respect Tookie. Yeah. Unless you was somebody like, I'm just gonna creep out of nowhere and mm-hmm. shook. I remember I had this girlfriend, well, not a girlfriend, but a friend of mine. And she was a cripplet. And uh she was like, you know, and she actually lived in the hills too. Mm-hmm. So she was like, yo, she, I was going to cringe at the time. She was like, I'm going to a a crip meet in the Sentinella Park. Come on, roll with me, blah. So we dress in the part. We look like it. So we fall in. Man, I got to Sentinella Park. There was more Crips than I ever seen in my life. So I'm standing there, there. So I'm like, okay, cool. So there was a bathroom right off to the side. And so I tell her, I say, yo, you know, we with a few other people, but I'm like, I'm going to go in this bathroom. Now I got the whole gangbanger garb on, suspenders, the whole shit. Mm-hmm. Not in no gang, but I look like it. So I'm, <laughs> I walk into this bathroom. Who's in the bathroom? Tookie and them niggas doing push-ups, right? Tookie and them niggas. <laughs> Tookie and some. So now I'm trying to. They in there buffing, getting ready for this big ceremony they about to do. He got these bib. He got uh, some combat boots on, these bib coveralls on, tank top. This was like normal Tookie look. Uniform, brownie gloves and shit, bandana. And them niggas is buffing, getting in sets because they wanted to be super swole when yeah. they hit the stage. Yeah. Uh, I'm in there trying to pay, man. <laughs> so I'm like, they just, there's a few niggas sitting back. I'm like, oh my God, why am I in this bathroom? <laughs> so I don't know if I pulled my dick out. I don't even know if I pissed any. I was just like, I just went through the motions. Because like, all it takes for them to go, yo, cuz, yo, who you with? Yeah. You know, who you with? Yo, 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 I, I'm with Butchie. Butchie ain't nobody, cuz. <laughs> Like Damn. you better name a top nigga. They just yeah. gonna sock you in your phone. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> so I just banked my little ass out. I think I was probably like in the tenth grade. I banked my little ass out. I got out there. I remember they had. I remember Cutes, OG Cutes was yeah. up there. Rusty was up there. Um, um, of course, um, took Jamel. I think Iron Man from um, from Imperial Court Crips. Big niggas. And uh, it was a big crip meeting. They started yelling out the sets and shit like that. I was like, yo. But like I say, I navigated the gang world and <clears throat> me. Uh, it's it's not to be played with. Right, right. It's, it's not to be played with. These kids are dead serious about their shit, you know? Um, what made you gravitate toward the player life? You know, more being about the bitches and yes. getting money and you just said it. Be, you know, the women. The okay, the women. The women. Okay. Because the gangbanger girls were a little 
rough around the edges, so mm-hmm. to speak. You know, I knew I had a little girlfriend named Emma Marcia. She was a little cripplet, but they was a little rough. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I started hanging out with my other partners who were like players. They were crap shooters mm-hmm. and uh, you know wearing tailors to school and yeah. stuff. I don't know. People don't know what tailors are, but we used to actually go to a tailor shop and get tailor made clothes made. You know, fly shoes. Damn, you was doing this in high school? Yeah. Okay. Tailors, gators. Uh, you know, we dress and, and so the, those cats used to walk around and they would have the Iceberg Slim books in their pants or, or the Donald Gorn books. And I'd be like, what are them books? Mm-hmm. And I start reading them books. And that's when I, I just like, yo, this is fly right here. So I decided like, I'm going to lean in this direction. Yeah. And uh, started hanging around with a whole nother clique of cats that was about money. Mm. <sighs> is that where you came into the getting into because I know you went through a phase of your your criminality and shit. We all go through that. Um, was that when y'all start getting into the the jury shit and, and all of that? The jury happened after I came from the military. Like, mm-hmm. what made you go to the military? I had a daughter. Okay, I had a daughter. So I I left my aunt's house when I was seventeen years old. When I was on my eighteenth birthday, I was out. Mm-hmm. because my aunt was getting $250 a month social security for me from my past parents. And I wasn't on the same level with her. And I was just like, you know, give me that $250, I'm out. Mm-hmm. And she gave, she said, she signed it to me. And I said, my next call will be where to send it. And I mm-hmm. found an apartment by Manual Arch for $100 a month. And she sent me the 250 I paid, my, the, the, I had the money go directly to the landlord. So he mm-hmm. got the check and he would hand me $150. That's how I guaranteed. Cause he's like, how am I rent to you? I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna have a check come to you. Might've been my first business deal. Yeah. yeah. Sound like you was mature and kind of just advanced <clears throat> for your age. Well, too. I was on my own yeah. court early. So I said, look, my aunt's gonna send, the money will come to you. Mm-hmm. You'll be the bank. You'll give me the 150 mm-hmm. and that's how it's gonna work. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, okay, now I'm gonna take another hundred and buy food. Lots of ramens, lots of um, raviolis and shit like that. Vienna sausages and shit like that. And then I had 50 bucks. Yeah. So I'm now I'm popular. We used to take that 50 and buy weed. This was back when you buy like a pound of weed. Like Reggie with, shit. Yeah. Sticks and. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five, five finger. You dig it. So my, my boys would sell weed and, you know, we was trying to hustle a little bit petty crime. But. Now that I got this apartment, my girlfriend, who's a 10th grader, is now coming over too much. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Got yeah. pregnant. Yeah. And I wasn't that, I wasn't that uh, experienced sexually. Like mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I wasn't busting nuts in the 10th grade. You know, I'm watching all the girls, when I got to high school, all the girls was dating niggas that looked like they was 40. Like yeah, when I got- for sure. <laughs> that was, that's, that's what it was, bro. You know, it's funny that you say that, because even with the, the R. Kelly shit and all of that. Right. Coming from our generation, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm younger than you, mm-hmm. but even with me going to high school, man, it was like a lot of the little chicks in my high school was getting picked up by niggas that was 25, 20. They that was coming was, to school wearing their starter coats <laughs> and they chains and shit. And we used to be like, we can't compete with that shit. Exactly. You know the girl would play with you all day during the yeah, school. Exactly. And then at night, exactly. you see some dude pull up exactly. in a phone, boom. Yep. Like, it's, yep. I'm like, who is. Fuck, bitch. Yeah, like so, this nigga, 35. Nah, I was messing like, with a chick in high school that was with a 30-year-old. Laughing. Yeah, it, it was a little old chick. Oh, okay. Before Leslie. Before. <laughs> nah, so that was that was high school. Yeah. So by the time I started to get some leverage, when I get to be the 12th grader, yeah. I got I had leverage on a 10th grader. Ah. And, you know, I had my own pad, and uh, she ended up pregnant. Damn. Because... My unfamiliarity with busting nuts. <laughs> I just didn't hey, know. Hey, OG, just, hey, listen, I'm 45. <laughs> right. Bro, next month. My oldest child's 28. Right. I had her at 16. I conceived See. her at 15. Right. So, so you, same thing. You, you know what I'm saying? You don't know. As soon as, as soon as I got in, <laughs> that thing happened. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? And there it was. Nine months later, it was, oh, shit. You know what And I mean? it's before, you know, everyone, mm-hmm. this is before condoms yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff, you know, safe sex. It's... It was just like, but so anyway, I got a daughter. Yeah. And uh, I remember I, you know, we had her and had her in an apartment and they would have weed parties and she had one of my boys, Al P, still with me today. 
It was like, y'all got to stop smoking all this weed. Stop smoking this weed. There's a baby in here. We got a baby <laughs> in the back room like that. What if the police come? One of y'all niggas might flush the baby. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just got, I just had a, like a wave of responsibility yeah. hit me like, okay. Man, I know that all too well. Okay. I'm not doing what I should be doing. I, I was supposed to go to trade technical college to work on body and fender and all that. And I'm just bullshitting. I'm out here hitting petty crimes, mm -hmm. not jury let, but mm -hmm. just bullshit. So I went to an enlistment office and I said, you know, I want to join up. And at that time I had done gymnastics and stuff. So I was pretty in shape. So I was like, they said, well, if you go infantry, you get a $2,500 bonus and stuff. So I just followed the bonuses. I ended up in uh, Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, 25th Infantry. I did basic at Fort Leonard Wood. I went to AIT in Bragg, I mean in Benning. And um, when I, uh, four years, mm -hmm. and then when I came home, that's when. Did you get honorably discharged? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. Was there any action? Did we ever deploy to any? No, never downrange. Mm -hmm. But I trained. I went to Darby, went to Ranger School. I'm yeah. Ranger qualified. So I did everything. Uh, jungle School. Wow. You know, I'm so a that shit, So that shit aided when you got I'm a, back I'm to a, the streets. I'm a cold weather expert. I'm a cold weather expert. I'm a jungle expert. I, all this shit is aided, but at the end of the day, cold weather expert, want me to teach you something? Stay the fuck out the cold. All right, jungle <laughs> expert, want me to teach them? Stay the fuck out the jungle. All right, but... It aided me to it, except that it aided me to the point where I understood discipline, I understood yeah. regimen. And there was a point when I was uh, in the military and this little ranger walked up on me, the sergeant, and he told me, Marl, you're in here because you can't, you can't survive in the civilian world. And that fucked my head, of course. Damn. That was the moment where I was like, word? Well, I kind of did come here as a cushion, you know? <laughs> Well, yeah, put something on your mind. I said, I can make it out there. Don't, you know, I'm not, I don't have to stay here. And uh, at that point, I decided, I decided, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not going to re-up. I'm going to get out. You know, so when I finally got out, four years, honorable. Mm -hmm. Now my boys had elevated. Mm -hmm. And they're hitting jury licks and, you know, yeah. all, all kinds of things of that nature. So with the jury licks, was that kind of like smash and grab or straight up, you know? Every kind of way. Really? Cause I know the statute of limitation has been passed, but well, you know, you the, gotta. Have I never it. killed nobody. <laughs> yeah, so that, I'm uh, saying, but you robbed some motherfuckers. But there's only statute. There's <laughs> only only thing that doesn't have statute of limitations is right. murder and forcible rape. Right. I've been playing a cop long enough to know. <laughs> <laughs> but twenty something years. But then one of my boys was saying you shouldn't talk too flagrantly about crime because now that you're well off somebody from the past could say you traumatized them during something and they want some you know but it got to be a statute of limitation for that shit too huh well you know I what mean, we look at bill cosby they, i guess not huh? they nah. say those who say don't know and yeah. those who know don't say yeah so i speak on it and the thing with it is i used to talk deeply about it and people right. say well you're glamorizing it but there's a lot of ways but we were doing every kind of lick possible yeah. Yeah. you know we were you know, you could do a burglary, you could do a stay in, you know, where like a department store, you just stay in the motherfucker when they close and come out later. Damn. You know, you could do a, a, a basic bash where you walk in and you break the case. Yeah. You could do a snatch and run. You could do a pistol bash where you right. draw down and then you bash. You can you can come you can come in at night and hit the spot. Some places in country leave jury out at night. So there's a million ways to skin a cat. Uh, you can hit the jury uh, guys that carry the jewelry, right. the jewelers. Right. You can, you. there's a, there, trust let me, me. Let me ask you. There's what a you, million ways to skin a cat. Do you think that your training in the military kind of aided in having the, the dispute? Because see, with me, I, I, I tried my hand at, at, at armed robbery when I was younger. I didn't have the stomach for it. I didn't have the, the cause you gotta have cool nerves. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you know, that's a skill set in itself to be able to do that and keep your composure. Cause you know, if you have to do something to somebody, then that's a, you done fucked it up. Well, you right? know, but I didn't have the, the you know, the nerves to like, I'm, I'm too, too nerd. Like I, I get it. I, I didn't I, fucked around. I, I've somebody. taken people with me yeah. that should never have been. Exactly. Like dope dealer friends. I used to have drug yeah. dealer friends that were like, yo man, take me on lick. 
and I took them on the lick, and they almost urinated on themselves. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, my thing was, like, I think the military mm -hmm. taught me how to focus, mm -hmm. but, and also, I've never been caught. Mm -hmm. I've never been captured. I've never been arrested for a crime. Mm -hmm. So, because my my mentality has always been, the getaway is way more important than the lick. Absolutely. You know, like, I don't care. We can get a million dollars and bring it back here, but what if the, the cops yeah, are going to come? Yeah. So it's more about planning the getaway mm -hmm. than the actual lick. Right. And that's military. Right. What if we're going to go attack this place? We got to get home. We're not, mm -hmm. this is not a suicide mission. Right. The object is to get bring it back. So I almost would create licks backwards. Like, this is... These are all the different ways. I mean, some of the stuff we did was pretty amazing. I'm actually writing a book right now with one of my partners called mm -hmm. Spike, who my book is called Split Decision. And it's about one of my crimes who was with me daily up until the time I made the decision. I'm no longer breaking the law. Mm -hmm. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And I told everybody I'm going to become a rapper and mm -hmm. do this because... <clears throat> It's a choice. Yeah. And he decided to do one last lick. Mm -hmm. And um, he caught 26 years in prison. Wow. Because he sent two crews on licks. And during the execution of one, someone got murdered. Mm -hmm. So they gave him the conspiracy because he was the mastermind. Exactly. Yeah. And they were trying to give him the death penalty. Mm -hmm. So our book shows two people in the same trajectory and in one split decision since two people in two, like 26 years. That's the curve of my entire career. Mm -hmm. Now he's home. So it's a cautionary tale. This thing about crime, no court, the different thing about crime that anyone who's delving in it, there's a point where it becomes very dark. And if you're not, you, there's going to be a split in the road. And if you if you really aren't if you're one if you're willing to take that dark road, mm -hmm. there's no turning back. <clears throat> I think what it is too, um, I think the more you get away with, the more brazen you become. Because even with myself, like when I was fifteen, you know, we actually robbed a few gun stores. That mm -hmm. was our thing, mm -hmm. you know. And um if you can imagine a 15-year-old kid, I literally put it together. I mm -hmm. was good at stealing cars. You know, mm -hmm. I used to have stolen cars around my neighborhood all the time. Mm -hmm. I used to actually get into it with niggas for stealing my stolen cars. You right, know? right. And so um, <laughs> I actually, you know, I was watching, uh, I think it was Lethal Weapon, the first one. Right. And where Gary Busey goes through the front of the store in the movie. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, you know what? If I sent one of these cars through the front of a gun store, I can run in behind it mm -hmm. and, and grab them. And I did that shit, pulled it off. Yeah, that's that's did it several times. That's that's a yeah. That's one 15. of the ways to do yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> I was fifteen. Now, inevitably, my ass got caught. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got caught down bad. I'm talking about shoe prints in the store. You know, got caught with three or four of the stolen guns. You know, fingerprints on. You know, so that getting away with it shit at fifteen. Dude, I've been I with my partner that. sitting in the car. All right, I'm not gonna say his name because <laughs> we were sitting in a car. We're gonna go into this jewelry store in a mall that potentially that left the jewelry out, meaning the gate would come mm -hmm. down, but they wouldn't put it in the safe. Damn. So we sitting in the parking lot, and then the the street sweeper comes around in the parking lot. We lay down on the floor of the car for like a half hour while this one street sweeper does the whole parking lot. So I'm sitting there, and when we sit up, I look at him. He hits the gas, right? We drive into the mall. We go through the big doors of the mall. Now we're in the mall Damn. driving. Hits a lemonade stand. Now we make a left turn. We're in the mall in a big car, <laughs> a Cadillac with a, 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 a with a with a um, vinyl top. Hit the car, roll past the jewelry store. I go, is that it? He goes, yeah. Throws that motherfucker in reverse. Blah, blah, <laughs> blows out the thing. We jump out, pop the trunk, loot the spot, jump in the car drove all the way back Damn. to the hood got home and there was glass in the vinyl top this is the hijinks and the wild shit that yeah. you're doing but see this is what i'm going to say and this is something i want to make sure people understand mm -hmm. that that sound like fun right but when i say it's a dark place yeah it gets dark and that's what people don't understand like mm -hmm. you're selling weed everything's cool eventually someone's going to tell you they're going to kill you eventually it's going to get gangster yeah it's going to be Murder is going to become 
mm-hmm. necessary. Now, there's some people that have played this game. It's like, okay, we got to kill these niggas. Let's kill mm-hmm. these niggas. Okay, they're cut for that. I wasn't cut for that. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to kill people. I just want to get my money and get away with it. Mm-hmm. That dark decision is a big decision. It so, is. And, 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 and some people are comfortable on that. And, hey, you way more gangster than me. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's like, yo, we just go in, we shout these motherfuckers, we tie these niggas up, we kill these niggas. Okay, that road I wasn't willing to have on my soul. I just didn't want that. I didn't want to be a murderer. Yeah. And, but murder will come into play. In, in in life, motherfuckers will do you wrong. Niggas will cross you, mm-hmm. and you have to make this decision. I've saved I've saved niggas' lives that have crossed me because niggas want to put green lights. Niggas like I've had people that have done low to me, and I've gotten phone calls and people like, "Dude, sitting right here, what's happening? Mm-hmm. What's happening? <clears throat> you know what that means? Yeah, for sure." And I'm like, ain't nothing, man. That's not that's over with. Yeah. Cause now this person who's my enemy don't know who don't they say is like. Right, right. It, you know, because these these wolves, they like, yo, nigga, we want to do this and get that point so we can get at you and get, exactly. you know, whatever for exactly. that, whatever they want. Exactly. But I'm just like, yo, so you just have to, you have to pick a path. And your path, I don't, I going for money is one thing, but going for money and 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 hurting people yeah. and going into that dark realm. It's a whole nother thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I I had to walk that duality, you know what I'm saying? Because I got sucked in, and I got sucked in pretty far. But, you know, it was something in me that always felt like it was something bigger for me as well. So, like I always say, you you know, I wasn't ever kind of what I would consider a born-to-lose-ass nigga. You know, mm-hmm. you got some motherfuckers that they okay dying in the street. Mm-hmm. For me, it was, okay, this is what I'm doing now, right. and I'm with the shit right now. But I do know that at some point, I believe there's something more for me. Absolutely. You know, so operating from that space, it's like you st- you're going to be stupid, but I'm not going to just kamikaze with the shit. You know what I mean? And like you say, to your point, I did all of that shit at 15. But then when I wound up in jail, mm. that's when it hit like, oh, shit. Oh, you really got to do this shit. Oh, this the other side of that shit. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like. Yeah, see that ain't that ain't for me. You know what I mean? Hey, that, some people are for that. Some people are yeah, cut so like you that. You got some cats that don't mind being in jail and all. Yeah, yeah my, my cool entire family, that. my entire cool family is always in and out. Uh, some of them is gang banging in Northern California jails and shit like that. Uh, Latino gangs. But uh, I had called you and told you like when I caught that case mm-hmm. and they put me in that cell. I was like, oh, this is that dark path. Like. Yeah. Cause you don't have no choice at that point. Now you're in it. Listen, yep. listen. Real gang banging, real gang banging is a murderous in, a, a situation. Because mm-hmm. all a real gang banger does is retaliate. Yep. It's war. They're at war all the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you know, people want a casual gang bang, wear the colors and all that right. kind of stuff. Right. But the cats that are out there putting in work are at war. Yeah. And see, yeah. I was too, <laughs> I was too cerebral for that shit. Because yeah. for me, I was mature and intelligent. So I'm with the shit, but this got to make sense. Though. Right, right. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking this shit like, yeah. hold on. No, I get we want to kill the nigga. What do you, why again? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but so you got some cats, shit, for the set, just cuz. Exactly. I'm like, just cuz. I, I said I it to you after. That. I said, I realized, especially in that moment for me, I said, oh, I'm not a gangster. Like, <laughs> I came out of that situation like, I'm not a gangster. Well, like, this, maybe this I is, thought I was more than what I am. You could be, the, the object is just being aware that that element is active. Yeah. Yeah, that that element is active. That's what what people mistake. They like, okay, I don't, I'm not like that, so it's not active. No, that element is active. Like I always tell people, I say, you know, when you're out in the street at night and it's after one or two o'clock and you're walking around, mm-hmm. you're in danger. Yeah, especially if you're in a, a poverty ridden area and stuff because there's cars mm-hmm. that are out hunting. Yep, yep. You know, we used to, to do it. We used to set our clock so we wouldn't oversleep. We set our clock for midnight to get up and go, yeah. Go, and they're hunting. Yeah, yeah. And they're rolling around yeah. doing whatever. And people are like, well, how do you know that? And I said, because I've been in them cars. I've been one of them, yeah. I've been in those cars. So to theory, you know, when I'm telling my wife, hey, do this, all these things. Like a yeah. gangster, this person that's been through my life is the most paranoid person ever. Like, Absolutely, I'm just OG. like, watch this, watch this. Absolutely. Be careful this, be careful that. Because you were the predator Hell at one yeah. time. So you're like. I understand it. Now, here I am now later. Here we go. You know, 30 years later. And uh, 
all that stuff is not relative to me because I number one, I'm not living in the same neighborhood. I'm not 15. I'm not held to gang right. rules or anything like that. But you still understand it. Absolutely. And uh, you know, my music, I always try to educate people about that world. Like if 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 you're from it, my music will reaffirm what you yeah. understand. And if you're not, I'm trying to take you on a journey. Absolutely. And safely. To think, and to think about it, like if we get to like power, you know, Squeeze the Trigger was again, like I said, my first gangster rap record. Uh NWA, um, it, it was a different NWA to me was more um apolitical. Yeah, but it, when I heard it, it didn't affect me like an Ice-T record. Like, N.W.A. was like a movie. It mm -hmm. was just watching some cool shit that you know you can't do, right? But when I when I heard High Rollers, I ain't going to lie, OG. When I seen the video, that's the shit that turned me out. Because I remember saying, ooh, I want a house like that. <laughs> I want a gun like that. I want some bitches like that. You know what I mean? And from that stage, I that kind of helped set the path. For the high roller video was a trip, dig it, because yeah. because you know, see, like like I was saying, most of my records are definitions. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, I'm gonna show you what a player is. I'm gonna tell you what a high roller is. Straight yeah. up nigga. I'm gonna say some of y'all niggas is bitches too. Yep. I'm gonna break all these different things down. So let's do the high roller, right? Uh, which is different than the new Jack Hustler. Right. This is the high roller, and so we set up this video. That wasn't my house. That was a house they had in Encino, mm -hmm. but. I just told the homies, we getting ready to shoot a high roller video, bring your shit. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'll come up all these cars, <laughs> I'll come all these guns. So uh, like I say in one of my records, the gats in my promo shots ain't props. So they get, they, we get there and all the white people that are shooting the video are terrified. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute, we need a problem with this many weapons here, this, this, that, and the other. We got money here. There are those real drugs. Yeah. So you got all this stuff here. And the homies had just brought it. So I'm like, okay. So we had to have everyone show up in a bedroom yeah. and do a gun check. Yeah. And pump and we dumped bullets. Cause a lot of the guns were loaded. Yeah. yeah. Bullets out onto the bed. Yeah. And I had to tell everybody, promise me, you know, that that they you know the the crew is nervous yeah yeah but we want to shoot the video this that and the third so during the shooting of that video there's a bedroom upstairs it's mm -hmm. full of m clips yeah. and all kinds, yeah. <laughs> all kinds of shit and uh you know we just had fun man we just had you know, my favorite part of that video is Donald D walking around the pool with an M16. That's the it. part. That was my part. That's what made me want it the AR-15 or the M16 at the time. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. And then you had a uh, 1911. I, had the big shit phone. I think you had the the Chrome 1911, I believe. Even I, know, I had the I, I had the um I had I had thrown all that stuff on the bed. I had the bulletproof yeah, vest, the this, yeah. that, and the third. Yeah. But once again. I die. You die. I didn't care about that shit at that age. <laughs> I didn't care about that shit. I clearly saw that you died, but I was like, fuck it. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die like that. In a house like that, with a gun like that, and some bitches like that. Like I said, that's what I was on. We always say, did you not watch the last scene of Scarface? I watched Scarface? everything. You know, the last everything. scene is what it's about. <laughs> and, and you know what? I always had this, this moral compass that said I could never make music like mm -hmm. that without that. Yeah, right. Right, because I had people in prison, and they was like, "Ice, don't promote, don't don't yeah. send nobody." Right. This was the line: "Don't send nobody here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OG. Don't send nobody here. Like, do your shit." Yeah. And then one of my other boys was like, "You ain't never got to lie because you've lived too much of a wild right. life. So, but don't send nobody here." So, I always had that in the back of my head. You know, yeah. sometimes I would even write stuff. I'm like, uh, "This is a little bit too." To like, yeah, like you sensationalized like you yeah, it, yeah, you yeah. know. But you know, that's that's for the artist to have. You know, that's my conscience. I always got that in the music, though. I mean, it was always well balanced. You know, even when you had like shit like Midnight. You know what I mean? Obviously, that's some gangster tale shit. You yeah, know, adventure. Uh, yeah, you know, adventure type shit. Um, like we were talking about with Peel Your Cap, Peel the Caps Back. Yeah, that's one of my favorite. Like, you know, I well, I better not say that. Um, what? 
yeah, I didn't use that song a few times back in the day. <laughs> what, <laughs> you know what peel the cast back? Yeah, to get get in, get in, you know, get, get, get your mind right. But because I never smoked, but he a said drink. he said ain't an active banger. Yeah, well, I wasn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was just for the situation. But you know, I never smoked or drank. Anything I ever did was was just I, I was there. How that go? Lucid. Cooling at my crib, yeah, cold, cold video, video dubbing. dubbing. FBI, FBI one, one don't, mean don't mean nothing. Mean nothing. That, they call that shit a crime. Yeah. It's a joke. Hit record, record on, on my, my dope, dope remote. I heard the phone, phone ringing. Ring. I wonder who could it be. It was the, the E, the V, yes, the I L E. He, he said, said we, we got, got static. static. Word, I just got out. Punks tried to move at the club. We, we shot, shot bullets, bullets everywhere. everywhere. Okay, what's the problem? Ain't got, got shot. Bullets. He's dead, dead as, as a door doorknob. Nah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. That's your but shit, but bro. but <laughs> see what I what I write. My music is what I call faction. Yeah, it's. Factual situations turn into a fictional story. Mm -hmm. So I've I've had a phone call like that. Mm -hmm. Where they yo they did. I remember. I mean, no bullshit. All respect to Nipsey Hussle. Uh, I got a call the day Nipsey got caught, got shot, and it was like a quick call that came in. Like uh, actually, it was a text, and it said they just rock nip. That's just like it. They just rock nip. I'm like, what? Like that's you know, and and then and then um, you start doing your research yeah. and you find out. But that's how that shit pops up. Yeah. So you're sitting home, and then they just say, "Yo, shootout just happened. What word? Mm -hmm. They kill him. Yeah. Huh? Okay, I'm gonna be. I'm on my way. So then you go and you 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 go up and you pull up, and it's usually a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Once somebody gets killed, there's always people in the street. There's mm -hmm. people crying. It's a bunch of shit. And then there's another conversation that's going on. Absolutely. And that's the gangster conversation. Yeah. And if they're going to retaliate immediately, they will. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they fall back. But in Peel Your Caps Back, I wanted to take you in. Like, this is how it really happened. And the beat was so eerie. Doom, 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 yeah, doom, doom, the beat doom, was just doom, eerie. Doom, doom. There's no chords, no nothing, just mm -hmm. yeah. And one that's another thing about ice tea music. I always try to make the music match the topic. Mm -hmm. So if it was something stupid like let's get butt naked and fuck, it'd be a crazy mm -hmm. dumb beat with mm -hmm. marquees. But if it's something like peel your cash back or, or uh, um what's the other one? Uh, um shit, even drama. Yeah, drama. Drama. But drama is now see drama gives you the game. Yeah. You know, if yeah. they don't know who you are, they don't know, they what, know what you've you done. done. Making, this, making this shit hard on yourself, son. I, I know this shit by heart. Too clever. You have ever you been, ever been arrested before? Never. No, never. Now, 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 you have to go to jail to understand yeah. that if you, yeah. if they don't know who you are exactly. and they don't know your name, you probably DA reject. DA reject. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know, so all this stuff I'm game, but then all of a sudden my boy started <clears throat> illing, talking and telling yeah, son yeah, of a bitch. He, he was, was a snitch. snitch drama. drama. <laughs> I was about to get out. Yeah. And that song, I mean, I even <laughs> knew about not snitching and all of that because my mother always said, don't be a tattletale. But uh, when you said, if they don't know who you are, they don't know what you've done. When I got caught, I did that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I had no reference point of that, but from that song. Mm -hmm. So when they when they snatched this up, when I was 15, I was in there like, shit. I don't, they was like, so you don't know the guys in your, that was in the car with you? Like, I ain't never seen them before. Right. <laughs> right. Like, how you not going to know the motherfuckers you ride in the car with? I don't know them. It was like, well, dude lived down the street from you. I ain't never seen him. Exactly. Playing Make them do their shit. job. Let them do their job. So it, that that drama, you know, I got so much gain from those records back then. Good, you know, I ain't going to say bad, but necessary. Well, it was necessary. See, Court, me being inspired by Iceberg Slim, mm -hmm. Ice-T music is more literature than music. It's, right. it's my attempt to do what Iceberg did, did through records. Right. You know? Um, I just wrote a new song called Dumb Niggas, which is about people talking on social media. Right. And it's uh it's it's game, but the thing of it is, it's like it'll fall on deaf ears if you are square. Yeah. Exactly. You don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You I'm not talking about buying Gucci or nothing like that. I'm talking, mm -hmm. I'm telling you real criminal shit. And if you pay attention and you know what I'm talking about. You know, it'll go over most people's heads. Yeah, yeah. Debbie, I did a record called Forced to Do Dirt. And uh, 
I only hang with real niggas who wear gold and jewels, diamond rings strapped with tools. I take no shorts because I've been in it for the long one, the strong one. Gotta tell the truth, you'll have my niggas is on the run. Street giants defiant to the laws that the white man made, nigga. That's why we played, nigga. AKA the street hustler from the west side. Too damn fly, too much finesse for the who ride. I'd rather take a mark off smooth because the skill of a hustler is to stick and move and make you say, damn, what's his name? Got to give a nigga props because the kid got game mad game fool i base my hustle not on th uh, not on strength but thanks you say the liquor store i say brinks because yeah. my mind's on a massive roll of the dice the magnitude of my game's insane precise so it's all about game and, and yeah. people like you know you say the liquor store i say brinks and they yeah. go like yeah you know we're gonna do it let's do it listen to force to do dirt <laughs> but it's all biographical and it's 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 me you know, yeah. Uh, when I say, uh, uh, I say, uh, cause, uh, cause I, uh, uh, how many fake gangster rappers will I hear tonight? Uh, I don't mind. I say the, I, I'm gonna, they, I'm gonna get mine. So I'm gonna let them get theirs. But I know in my heart what's true. Mm -hmm. And if you listen very closely, maybe you will too. My mind's blown off Armani boots. Pave medallion, no, my mind's blown off Armani suits, Pave medallions, eel skin boots. Uh, 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 it's some pimp shit. Yeah. It's some pimp, <laughs> it's some pimp shit. Uh, yeah, I got a silk robe and it's from Siam. This jam's for the hoods and thugs, pimps and hoes, slangers and drugs, bangers and thieves, cons and crooks, bookies and sharks, motherfuck the marks. <laughs> you got, you got, it. Yeah. like, you got to understand, like, I, I come from like a a group of cats that thought they was flyer than everybody. Yeah, right. So right. people say, well, Ice, you listening to the you, what the hood says. The hood says this about you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nigga, I used to pray on the hood. Right, right. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm from a clique of niggas that was, you know, fuck the marks. Like, nigga, we, we, we super fly, fly niggas. So you take that guy and you make him a rapper. <clears throat> And it's going to be a very interesting ride. Let me ask you, OG. Um, I always, you know, I, I actually did some research. I mean, I felt like I knew everything because mm -hmm. I followed you for my whole, you know, most of my life. But, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of, I said, damn, Ice never been in no bullshit. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But I, I, I seen a situation where somebody, you, uh, somebody robbed your your office. Yeah, my buddy. I never knew about that because this wasn't the social media, you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, what happened with with that? Now I've never I've never really had any severe drama. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, there was times when we was in the streets and we was actives, and there was enemies and might have been caring, you know. But I've never really been in no serious shit like that. I've always because see, court. I always wanted to be. A, a, a legit player. I'm not mm -hmm. a do low nigga. I'm not robbing people. I'm mm -hmm. not doing that. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm if anyone that got hit, they had insurance, and I'm they yeah. they claim we took more than they we did. <clears throat> right. And they, right. You know, everybody made out. Yeah, yeah, they made out. It was three mm -hmm. white guys. Yeah. They, that's what they said. <laughs> you know. So I was always smart enough about that, and I I was like Floyd Mayweather. I haven't been caught. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get caught. Mm -hmm. Even though one time they busted one of my partners, they say, no, we got enough film on Ice T to make a movie. Tell them to keep that. <laughs> And they keep his nose clean, but <laughs> no, absolutely. You got, that great, you got that great same story. Exactly, same story. <laughs> exactly. Was I it with Red a, Dot? Yep, yep. It was a Red uh, Dot. Yeah. My nephew, he just got killed a few months ago. Actually, um, you know, he was, uh, you know, he did his thing. He was actually an artist of mine. You know, rest in peace, Red Dot. Right, but man. he had a similar situation where he called me. He was pissed off. You know, dude got him. They were supposed to go in on something. Dude did the, you know, go in the front door out the back shit. It was mm -hmm. on some weed shit or whatever. This was a few years back. And um, I remember, and my nephew got down, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, so I remember saying, I was like, <clears throat> well, how much did he get you for? Mm -hmm. You know, and he told me, I was like, that ain't really, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I know what you got. That ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. I understand principle, though. You right. Know? I said, he didn't put a gun to your face. He mm -hmm. did some more goofy shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, we went in the front and literally went out the back door. Right. I said, let him make it. I said, because what I do know is he's doing that to other people. And it's going to happen later. And he's going to have, he's not going to, he, he's going to do it to somebody who doesn't have somebody like me in their ear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To keep, keep it off of you. And that's, I think probably within three months, 
dude and his brother got hit. Well, my son got robbed, and I and mm -hmm. I told him the same thing. I said sometimes when you give that pass out, that person that got away, it just inflates their ego. That's it. You get more brazen, you and start, they, yeah. and they connect. Yep. And see, I'm from the school where, like, real beef. Like now, everybody's on the internet, uh, but. That's not where that belongs. Like, Absolutely. I could, if we're on the internet, we can have fun. But once mm -hmm. it gets real, mm -hmm. that now that's over, mm -hmm. you know. And um, you, you just gotta learn how to get. You you just got to evaluate things. Like, yo, what is my thing? Is like, you know, see the street code's fucked up. Yeah. The street code says if someone disrespects you, you should kill them. Right. Like, really, like. Really, if someone's trying to kill you, you should defend yourself. Exactly. But for simple disrespect, sometimes you just got to take that L. You do. And one thing that you said, I don't know what publication you said it in or where you said it, but I read it years ago and it stuck with me through my levels of life. You said in order to level up, you're going to have to learn how to let some shit go. Yeah. And that's the absolutely true. You know that's the truth because I mean, and and the thing of it is, court. I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a very revenge based motherfucker. Yeah, me too. I want revenge. I think that's some only child shit because yeah. I'm the same way. I want revenge. Yeah. Uh, I I I wish death on all my motherfucking <laughs> enemies. But now, am I gonna go out and pursue that? Am I gonna right. spend my life pursuing that? Yeah. You know, no. But then, as you get older, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure you know, like I know, as you get older. You know, when you do that and you carry that type of energy, it's almost like you. No, I don't carry it. I kind of carry it in my little pocket. Like, yeah, but it's it, you. You almost. Oh, that nigga. Space. Oh, oh, that happened. All right, all right. We are gonna throw the party. Okay, cool, cool. But cool. yeah, once it happened, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a spiteful yeah. motherfucker yeah, too. Yeah, you know, once it because for me, it's not just good enough for me to win. Yeah, it's I need to win and my enemies lose. Right, like, I need them to fall and fall hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's just how I am. But. I try not to carry it around because you know that's like cutting off. You your a nose spiteful spike. motherfucker, man. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I, we had we got a lot of like uh, we have a lot of conversations. With well, you know, right? like like you got to remember, like for me, at one point in L.A., I had the Syndicate. Yep. All right. Now the Syndicate was a gang of rap groups, uh, a gang of gang members. Yeah. And they were all looking to me to kind of make the right decision. By creating the syndicate, we never had beef in L.A. Mm -hmm. There was the only L.A. beef that ever happened was N.W.A., which was a family feud. It was internal, yeah. yeah. But 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 Cypress hit all of us. Everyone was able to keep it because I based the syndicate after Lucky, Lu Lucky Luciano's mm -hmm. commission, mm -hmm. which said these are a group of bosses. Like I'm not the boss of any of the groups, but we agree to sit down before we fight. So when you create a syndicate like that and you create an organized situation, I'm not the boss, but I'm just saying before you guys go off on each other, because when you have all these groups, you've got all these little splinter cells, all yep. these little niggas that want to fight each other. Exactly. Yo, yo, DJ Quick and them just did. Okay, cool. Let me call the bosses over there and mm -hmm. let's squash this. Let's, right. We don't need to be trying to kill each exactly. other. Exactly, because that messes up the money. Right. So... I always, you know, uh, the art of war said that a, a general must not only be courageous, he must be wise. Mm -hmm. the, the soldier need only be courageous. Mm -hmm. So I always took the part of a general, like, I got to think this out. I had to think all the different moves this could yep. happen. Yep. You know, uh, you've got all these hotheads, like, let's go get them. Let's go do this. And you got to be like, mm, yeah. Uh. And then that could be looked at at you being soft. Right. Like, okay, right. you're soft. But my guys know that I'm not soft. Exactly. So they're just like, okay, ICE is making some smart moves mm -hmm. and he's moving us forward. Yeah. And that's the key. Because oh, most niggas are myopic. You know, they checker players. They only one jump. They can't see the forest for the trees. It's one jump. I'm mad. Let's do this. You know what I'm saying? So, you so your boy, your boy, <clears throat> you, somebody crosses you, your boy sees the person out there and wants to kill him. That dude now has a murder. He got that over your head forever, right? Yep. He has that over your head. When's he gonna play that card? Next time mm -hmm. he gets busted for drugs, mm -hmm. what? How loyal is that? If that, that's mm -hmm. why in the mob, that would be have to, the dude that would have to would have to be your family. It would be mm -hmm. have to be somebody that would never mm -hmm. ever. So, or or you put it out there that you want something to happen. Yeah, you know. So you got you got to think like this is a murder is forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah forever it's forever yep. it never goes away yep. there's it, it, it's 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 a, it's a story that has to go 
You got to take it to the, to the grave. <laughs> you know, you know, like I know, it's a lot of shit I know about, but you got to take it to the grave. You, you, it's one of them things you you carry it. Rather you, and that's the thing about it. Rather you know, you know, were involved or participated. Rather, but just knowing it, knowing that, oh shit, I know what happened. Well, I'm, I, I left. I passed that. I mean, I still, <clears throat> I still am connected to different elements yeah. and different friends and stuff like that. But you know, here I am now. You know. Longest running cop in television history. How yep. the fuck did that happen? Right. You know what I'm 23 saying? 23 years, huh? And SVU. I pulled it, yes, sir. And I pulled it off so good yeah. that people think I'm square. Like, yeah. they they like, oh, I see, yeah. I see he's corny. I see he's this, I see. And then their parents like, do you know the fuck that dude is? Exactly. Like, <laughs> you said, you said <laughs> a great thing, though. 23 years, that yeah. means there's tw- the new age person yeah. was but born to, while you were taking that gig. But to me, OG, I always thought that was the plan. Like it is coming, the plan. Coming from where we come from, you try to square it up. But you yeah. want to look like it's square. You want Man, but it, it was always New Jack City that. colors. Like, it was always the plan. Yeah. Yeah. He's an artist. You were you buying know? houses at a young age. Yep. You know? You could be the biggest drug dealer in the world, right? Mm-hmm. You know what you spend the rest of your life doing? Trying to act square. You yep. tr- you have to clean the money. Exactly. You have to put on the exactly. image that it's legit. You just can't be a dope dealer and move into Scottsdale and say, I'm a dope dealer. Exactly. You, you, you have to put on this image. So learning how to square up. I mean, I used to watch the old gangster movies where the guy would show up in the 30s and the first thing the guy would say, put on a suit. You look mm-hmm. like a mug. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. yeah, we can't carry yourselves like that. So when you're young, it's cool. But as you elevate yeah. like Master P and you become mm-hmm. businessmen right. and all that kind of stuff, you you, you refine. Exactly. You refine. You should. You, you should. Well, you don't. Know, you know, it's like funny people. People will say, well, what the difference in ice tea is now? And I said, well, the old diff- ice tea is I'll kill everybody. Yeah. That was the old. The, I knew I see it. You know, I'll kill you, right? <laughs> it, it, it's 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 not it's not it's not this so, it's 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 actuality right there's no extra boisterous to it it's like motherfucker you know this what this is right. and when you dealt with jay prince or when you deal with people mm-hmm. that are influential and know it's it's, it's like master p it's like there's nothing there it's it's not it's nothing there because it's there right exactly. <laughs> so i mean you had your share of beefs what precipitated i always wanted to know this what precipitated the ll shit nothing just rap shit rap shit ll was not beef beat see rap- you, i want to who 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 struck first because i think you struck first. i struck first okay with i'm not your pusher yeah, well, see, this right. is what happened. I was just listening. <laughs> yeah, you know this what happened. Because I was watching Ice-T, this, so look, you know it's some bullshit. This, so this is what had happened. When a nigga start out with, well, this is what had happened. It was you bullshit. Some, it was, shit. like I say, it's not, it's rap beef. Let's okay. put it like that. Okay. It's not beef beef, like, you know, right, right. street niggas going to see you and hurt you. Nah, you know? nah, I knew it wasn't but, that. But I'm saying, what was your issue with LL no rap, issue. rap beef? No issue. Just uh-huh. LL said he was the greatest rapper. Okay. Okay. And I was at the time trying to come out of LA. Yeah. I was vis- I was trying to be the first West Coast rapper yeah. that was nationally accepted. Mm-hmm. This is two years before L- NWA came right. out. Right. I'm by myself. Yep. Well, if you're trying to be a boss, you got can't no let nobody else say they're the boss. Real talk. So I had to get him. I got at him. He said, I'm the best. I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. Right? And that, and now, whether I thought I could actually out-rap LL or nothing, at that time, I did. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yo, fuck this dude. Right? Right? Let's go. And basically, it was just a rap challenge. Yeah. yeah. It was just a rap challenge. We was dissing each other, this, that, and the third. There was never a situation where we we're going to hurt each other. <laughs> did it or, ever? Because, I mean, I know back then, tours and different things like that. Did y'all ever have a time one where night. it could have? Oh, really? One night we were in New York and uh, L wanted to be in Zulu Nation and I was connected to Africa Islam, so I'm already Zulu. And they asking me, can L get into Zulus? And I'm like, nah, you know, <laughs> like that. And then we were at this inter- situation and me and him had to sit down and Bam was there and Jam Master J was there and Red Alert and we shared some words, but Bam, Bada was so powerful, he just wanted peace. So from that moment, we agreed not to 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 not apologize, but not continue dissing each other. Yeah. Okay. A ceasefire. Yeah. So truce. Truce. Okay. 
And at that point, it was over. You never heard L say nothing about me or me say nothing about L. And it's funny, I ran into LL Cool J in one of the most odd places, Monte Carlo. We were in a, on the French Riviera in Monte mm. Carlo, the most elegant place. Yeah. We were over there doing a television uh, convention. So here we are, you know, 25 years later, grown yeah. men, both successful, both doing television. Yeah. And I seen LL Cool J <laughs> over there. I said, let me walk up to LL and say, I say, L, I say, uh, this is the first time I ever really, really talked. This is how long it been since me and him actually communicated. And I said, I just want to let you know, man, you know, no harm feeling, man. You know, back in the day, we were going at each other. At rappers were going at each other. That was just part of the game. He said it was the culture, Ice. Mm -hmm. It was the culture. He says, no harm taken, man. You know, I you got some in on me. I got some in on yeah. you. And I'm like... Yeah, he says, I need you, man. I'm like, what? He says, I'm starting Rock the Bells Radio, man. I'm going to call you, man. We need to build. People need to see this unity. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I've been, I've done mm -hmm. podcasts with L and stuff like that. Oh, that's dope. But it's just rap shit. Yeah. It's just rap shit. The biggest mistake I made was commenting on Soldier Boy because I was, I, I, I got kind of caught out there because the new rap came and the new rap was so odd to me and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I'm such a hip hopper that I was like, but then after that little thing, see the thing of it is my Soldier Boy thing was it wasn't an intentional diss. What happened was I was doing a mixtape and they were fucking with me. They were like, you niggas don't want to hear you. They want to hear Hurricane Chris, nigga. They want to hear Soulja Boy, nigga. You old, nigga. I was like, fuck them niggas, right? <laughs> so I was like, fuck these niggas. Them niggas ruin hip hop, right? So I went on a old man yeah. rant. Yeah. The niggas that I was working with taped it and put it at the front of their mixtape. Mm. Oh, man. It's wow. bad business. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Bad business. So now that goes out. Of course, he replies. Mm -hmm. My son is like, you got to say something back. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, what? He, now I'm replying. And this kind of the start of social media too, right? I, 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 I regret it mm -hmm. because first off, I had to, now when I look back at it, music is taste and it's also age brackets. So when Soulja Boy and them are 18, 16, 17, how am I in my 40s, 50s supposed to really relate to what they're singing about? Right. They're singing about that that age bracket. Right. So when you're a 16 year old kid, you're singing about a new bike. Mm -hmm. You're singing about new Jordans. That's what your that's your life. Mm -hmm. If me and you are singing, you might be singing about the price of jet fuel because you've exactly. got a private jet. Your right. life is in a whole nother exactly. thing. So to make a comment on the young music, it's invalid because we're not in that place. Right. You understand? So I was out of pocket because I was in a different age bracket that shouldn't have been commenting on that age bracket. But it looked more malicious than it was. Mm -hmm. It looked like I just woke up out of my bed and just said, yo, I'm just going to take off on this little yeah. nigga. It wasn't meant to be like that. Okay. I, lo that I love how much he listens to the lyrics. Yeah. I used to do the same shit when I was in the car. I hated when I actually hate when people call me in the car because that's my time to like yeah. I'm listening to some <laughs> shit. Like Well, lyricists are into lyrics. I'll tell you one time I was rolling with my wife and she was like, I don't listen to the words. I had to stop the car. <laughs> I was like, you don't listen to the fucking words. I labor over these fucking words. Yeah. You don't listen to the words. But most people, uh, they just listen to the music and stuff. So I had to start forcing her to listen to the words so she could understand what's going on and stuff. I mean, she's a white girl. Coco likes dance music. Yeah. But, I mean, rap music is lyrical, mm -hmm. you know? And some people are really, like, my favorite rapper is Prodigy from Mob Deep. Really? Yeah. Because it was wow. dope. Yeah. So, like, you know. It just, I, it, just his energy, his, his, his sound, his, he was very sinister, and his, his bars was top notch, but they're digestible. Like, I can listen to somebody like Twister, I can say, okay, you were rapping your fucking ass up, but I don't know what the fuck you said, <laughs> Twister. Right, yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So I like people that are like, that it's digestible, yeah. you know? You know I, feel like, I, I feel like he came from the, you, you paved the way for my favorite genre of rap, which was storytelling, because like, mm -hmm. That's what when I when I was growing up I, again bone twist like like it's technical they're, they're, right but yeah. Scarface right it's Scarface stories. told a story yeah for sure like you used to tell stories that I would really like listen to and for what it's worth I know I know people will argue with me but E40 I was a huge 40 fan he told 
Mm -hmm. right. He told the NorCal story. Well, Forty created another way of his own style of rapping, mm -hmm. yeah. which is unique. And that's the thing about people like myself. I like originals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you know, if you sound like somebody else, I remember when I used to listen to new rappers, and everyone sound like DMX. I'm like, okay, you're good, but you sound like DMX. Right. Then everybody sound like Pop. Or sound, you know. But when you hear that that original voice, like when Snoop came out, I'm like, that's unique. It's, yeah. And that's how you stand out. Yeah. Speaking of Tupac, you and Tupac, y'all had an interesting dynamic. You and I spoke uh, kind of about it on the uh, on, on the phone, and how you know a lot of people don't understand that you know Tupac was your that's your little homie. Yeah, last words, younger. last words was you and Cuba. Pac's you know? thirteen years younger than me, right? Right. And I, I knew Pac ever since he was in Digital Underground, mm -hmm. and you know as he's moved up in the gangster rap ranks, of course I worked with him. But I was not a fan of Pac hanging around L.A. gangbangers. You know, me being around it and growing up in it and Pac being from the Bay. If you're from the Bay, you don't really truly understand L.A. gangs. I'm just being honest. Right. And no matter how down you are, how gangster you are, L.A. gangs, you, you join an L.A. gang when you're 12, 13 years old and you build a bond. So when you're 20, like Chris Brown or somebody, and they say, I'm in a blood gang, you're not. You know, mm -hmm. they'll 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 come to the club with you. They'll party with you, mm -hmm. but you ain't putting no work with them. Right. The, the bond is different. Exactly. The bond is different. Yeah. So I I just worried about Pac. And uh, when Pac first came, he was hanging out with the kids from um, um, Rated R and Macadocious, mm -hmm. the first Thug Life kids. Them kids are Crips. Right. So then you know when he got with Suge, you know now he's dealing with Bloods. Right. Okay. So, you know, I would always just like get at him, you know, like, you know, but he was so hot. Yeah. He was so hot. And I had, I told you a story one night, Shock G, rest in peace, showed up at my door. Mm -hmm. So I'm living in Hollywood Hills. I get a knock on that door. I open the door, Shock G. I'm like, fuck you doing here? Cause he like, man, I'm just up here in the hills. I asked if any black people lived up here. They said, I used to. <laughs> wow. Knocked on my door. But he sat with me. He said, Ice, man, I wish you could talk to Pac because Pac respects you. But everybody kind of knew Pac was pushing the line. Yeah. And at the end of the day, he crossed the line, getting involved in gang shit, you know, fighting over a chain. And to a gangbanger, a gangbanger that's really gangbanging, it's like an insult to them. Like it's like, you know, you're a rapper and you're you're stepping in our area, mm -hmm. and you know the, like I tell people, I'm angry with Pac, mm -hmm. like 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 that's my kid. Like yeah. I mean, no, nah, I'm not gonna say he was my kid, but he was like a youngster, like to a little me. brother. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when Pac came over my house and he played "Hit 'Em Up" to me. So I was like, oh, you know, the first brilliant line was, I fucked your bitch. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. So I, I've always, you know, and when I say this kind of stuff, you know, the Pac stands, they're like, you're supposed to be riding with Pac no yeah. matter what. Yeah. But I'm like, nah, my job as an OG exactly. is to give him a little guidance. Exactly. You know, and I believe that, and you, you won't just hear me say that. You'll hear a lot of West Coasters say the same thing, that, you know, anyone that, I'll tell it to anybody. If you're not from L.A., don't fuck with the gangs. If right. you come to L.A. and you decide, oh, I'm just going to move into Hollywood Hills and you meet some Crips or you meet some Bloods or you meet some Pyrus or you meet some MS-13s, it's not the best idea to become friends and hang right. out with right. them or jump into that gang. <clears throat> <laughs> exactly. You know, it's yeah. just not the best idea. So, I, I mean, I miss Pac. And I love Pac, you know, but was he? Well, you think he was? He was angry at you for not jumping out there with him? Nah, he he wasn't really angry. He was maybe just like, come on. I, he yeah. just felt like we. He didn't have any animosity towards me. Mm -hmm. I didn't have it. When I'm saying I'm angry, it's just I'm just mad. Have you ever been mad somebody died? Yes, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'm not. Sure. I'm not. Yeah. I'm. 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 I miss him. Yeah. It's like you made some mistakes. Right. So you know, I've said it, and people, oh, you know, they. they I guess they take it wrong. Yeah. You know. Well, Ice T thinks. See, things of it is in, in Stan view. I can't tell Pac nobody because Pac is exactly. here and I'm exactly. here. But that's not how that's it not works. The truth. Yeah. It works like 
you know, seniority. Yeah. I can sit Snoop down. Snoop be like, yo, OG, yo, whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, I'm older than everybody. Yeah. Real talk. You know, so it's not about who got the most records. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, and I wish he might would have paid more attention to myself and other people. I mean, if he had a heat at the, 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 the information, he could probably still be here. It, I mean, it's literally, yeah. I mean, we all kind of know it was one false move. Yeah, one false move. I mean, no, like, no, it, no, it was accumulation of false. But right, I'm saying, right. but 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 that situation, you know what I'm saying? You hit the, you got involved in in gang politics. You hit a motherfucker who you probably, you know what I'm saying? Baby you didn't Lane. have no business hitting. You yeah. know, you didn't know that he was that, you know, because again, you're not in the hood. You, you don't know. You don't know who the enemies really are. You know what I'm saying? Where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri. I come to Kansas City, Missouri. I'm Ice T, and I go out on one of those blocks, and yeah. I start getting involved in their gang shit. It's just yeah. not. No, no. It's no. yeah, and I've been in L.A. 20 years, you know, and I know Pyrus. I know niggas from Grape Street, from Santana, all over. But it's different, you know. You can be associated and know people, but you don't take on. Oh yeah, I rock with niggas from woo woo woo. When I, I don't know what what court, when what I goes say this, there. I don't know if it's resonating. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you're dealing with niggas that are never gonna make a record. Like right. let, they're not in our world. They're right. in a whole nother world. Right. And they a lot of them have animosity towards you. Mm hmm Yo, Ice T, yo, you you rapping about me living. You know, yeah. you rapping how I'm living. Exactly. Some of them's like, go on. I, I remember when I first started rapping and you know, the gangbangers be like, yo, you said, you say 111 in our, you know, they want me to say the, the yeah. sets, you know. But then some of them be like, yo, nigga, like, they could have an attitude because <clears throat> I yeah. might pull up with a batter bitch. Yeah. I might be doing something that they not. Remember, these are, see. I heard one OG say something about mm -hmm. you, which I was shocked because mm -hmm. I've never heard anything bad about mm -hmm. you, know, but mm -hmm. well, I ain't going to say his name. You probably already know who I'm talking about. Um, I think his name starts with an M. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, he said he was just like, yeah, uh, yeah, except something for that motherfucking iced tea. Yeah, you good. I forgot what he called you. Good jewelry store heist ass mm -hmm. nigga. But you know you ain't, you know, that type of shit, mm -hmm. which I get as well, you know, even on my level. Well, I wasn't. You know I mean? I'm not. I mean, if you compare me to a gangbanger right. that's out shooting, killing and stuff right. like that, that wasn't me. I'm right. a good jewelry store heist nigga. <laughs> that's what he called you. You know, so 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 he knew, he knew what it was. But yeah. a lot of times people... See, when you say gangster rap, they want to immediately put you into gang banging. Right. right. And I never portrayed that. I'm a gang banger. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, but, you know, they knew. And mm -hmm. most of the cats also, even no matter how old the G's are, I'm older than them. Yeah. So it's like even like talk about Big U or somebody like that. Big U will say Ice is the big homie. Right. Right. Ice is Which older. I've heard him say. Yeah, yeah. Ice is, Ice is yeah. older than me. I used to see Ice and them yeah. pull up with jewels and the bitches yeah. and the fila. So there's, not, there's nothing fake about, you know, my history. And I don't portray to be Mr. I'm not Monster Cody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Rest in peace, by the way. Rest in yeah. peace. <clears throat> but, but my thing is, like, I always respected the gangs. I'm aware of the gangs. Mm -hmm. And I know how they operate. And I tell people to be mm -hmm. weary of LA gang. How I think I think what I loved about what you wanted to do with this podcast too mm -hmm. though yeah. was to to not deal with people so heavy handedly and to normalize or maybe even redefine what that gangster means. You know what I mean? Because right. like I, I I think you're right. Like people You know what gangster is to me, I tell people I don't back up well. That's gangster. So in other words, I'm cool, I got no problems with you, but when you start telling me or else or what's gonna happen, mm -hmm. well then that's that's when I, I, I'm like, yeah, okay, let's let's go. Cause like I am, I'm an orphan, I don't got nobody, and I ain't never got punk, and it's not gonna happen today. Mm -hmm. So if I gotta die on this hill, mm -hmm. then that's where I'm gonna die. But I'm not into threats, I'm not, I never been extorted, I never had somebody say, yo, I nigga, you know, niggas talk. Yeah. But the same motherfuckers talk, you meet them. Yo, nigga, you know, I was just fucking around. You know, you my nigga. You know, it's nobody saying, no, I is a bitch. I done, I done punked him. I whooped his ass. I did all that. None of that. It's right. never happened. Yeah. So, but my thing is now not about me because I'm gone. I'm out of this yeah. shit. It's the next kids. And I'm just like, you know, I was talking to Michael Franchise. You know who that is? Yeah. The mob boss. Yeah. He got a podcast now too, right? Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah, he does. His yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. He got, he got and, and, and uh and and I told him, I said, if I was hanging out around mob mm -hmm. cats, 
I'm quite sure you would say ice. Those guys might seem nice, but yeah, that's what a G does. Right, right. I'm not gonna say nothing bad about them, but exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so you know, let me ask you this, OG. So, I mean, coming from you know music, coming from the street life and shit, like, was it a hard transition into Hollywood and dealing with that whole thing? Because I found myself kind of struggling, um, <clears throat> you know, just with the, you know, Hollywood is different. Um, I, I, you know what I mean. But it wasn't hard for me. It wasn't hard for me, Court, because I wanted it. Mm -hmm. I wanted it. So, you know, my first invention into legit life was actually mm -hmm. the breaking movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would go to this club, the radio, and I would rap, and I would try to dress like a hip hopper mm -hmm. and uh, rap. And they decided they wanted to come make a movie, and that movie led to a song. Uh, well, really, I, I ended up in that club because I had made a record, the coldest rap, Cold Wind Madness, my first record. Then they that club asked me to come perform it. And when I got there, everyone in the club knew the words. So I was like a star in that club. You know, if you if they play your record in a club, you're a star in that club. Mm -hmm. So I can't started coming there. And then eventually the movie came and they the break dancers were there and all that. And they said, You'll be the break dancer, you'll be the rapper. In rapping, I was called featured rap talker. Mm -hmm. And uh <laughs> we did the song with Glove. Glove was the house DJ. We did Reckless. And that was just the opening door to legitimacy. Right. And uh, I liked it. Mm -hmm. And my boys would come up there. We They would come to the radio because there was white girls. who was like, they was like, what's you doing over there at MacArthur Park? I'm like, you got to come. It's like, wow, white bitches up in there. It's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they would come up in there with all the jewelry on and stuff like that. And they would be like, the girls thought, and they thought I was, made, made me look like I was a rap star, mm -hmm. you know, because my friends. And, uh. That was the beginning. And then my boys was like, nigga, you need to stay on this lane. You know, white people like you. Mm -hmm. You know, you got action. And I knew, I was smart enough to know that what we were doing, our days were numbered in low digits. It wasn't going to last forever because one by one, my boys were going down. Right. Life, murder. You know what I'm saying? The guy you talking about earlier, I knew him when he could walk. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know... I know LA, mm -hmm. but the uh, my boys. I mean, as as the movie started to go, I just started to feel that transition, and I just liked it. I wanted it, and like I say, my man in prison was like, "Man, don't come here, nigga. Mm -hmm. Do not come here. Yeah, this is not where you want to be. Niggas don't know nothing about no filet mignon. They don't right. know nothing about no Dom Perignon. Right. These niggas is banging all on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. You know." You know, and I and we at that point become fly. Yeah, you know, it's like you don't want to have to put that face back on and fight every day and get mm -hmm. swole up and all that. So I um, I just started to follow those options as they started to come and becoming a player made it easier than some of my buddies that were still more gangster mm -hmm. because they didn't understand finesse. Mm -hmm. You know, I would bring them to a movie set and a little white girl, uh. Uh, PA be like, you can't go there. Y'all with ice, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> no attitude. Yeah. That, yo, 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 yeah. you can't tell me shit. I'm like, yo, nigga. It's yeah. So I'm like, I can't even bring you. Right, right. Because y'all, right. it's mm -hmm. you niggas want to eat the furniture. Right. You know, <laughs> so. But as I started to move forward and stuff, uh, my friends that after they would come home, they, they promoted it. They were like, you doing the right thing, nigga. Mm -hmm. Stay with it. Stay with it. And then hip hop just started to happen. Mm -hmm. And then all like the gangsters of LA wanted to be in. I remember different guys' names. Yo, Ice, man, you know, I'm in, I want to get into this music business. I want to get into this music business. I want to get in. I'm like, well, you can. I had cats bringing me money. Like, I got 300000 man. Like, I want to invest. I'm like, I can't take your money. Why? Because, nigga, you'll ask for it back next week. Next week. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You'll ask for it back exactly. next week. I done invested yeah. it. But it was a movement because mm -hmm. a lot of people, maybe Master P included, saw that street cats were able to make money in hip-hop. For sure. And there was a, a place you could transcend, still have the cars, still have the jewelry, still have the women. All the entrapments that you wanted as a hustler right. was still available in the music business. Right. Uh, 
You just needed a rapper. But I guess when I say the transition, meaning like the Hollywood politics, just in terms of, you know, getting a job as an actor, you know, having to be friends with this person and and, and deal, you know, be in those circles. And I never that. dealt with that, Corey. Okay. Okay. I never dealt with that. I was fortunate that New Jack City being my first movie, uh, I never had to go kiss ass. I never had to go rub noses. I never had, I've never had to read. Wow. Damn. So, you know, when New Jack City came along, uh, you know, the story goes, I was in a club talking shit. I was in the bathroom and I'm on the I'm in there talking shit. Yeah, nigga, if 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 they if they could if they could put a, me under a microscope and find one fucking atom in my body that gave a fuck, then they'd have a chance, but I don't give a fuck. So I'm talking my <laughs> shit and Mario Van <laughs> Mario Van Peoples heard me and said that's gonna be my star. And then he yeah. came to me in the club and was with that bullshit, I wanna put you in a movie. I'm talking some females, I'm like, that's that bullshit. Yeah. You're just trying to let them know you're a producer. Yeah. All right, Mario, all right, give me your number. <laughs> and then I called it and it was Warner Brothers and I went in and it was laid out for me. They were like, you could be this guy, Scotty Appleton. I'm like, this nigga got a dreads, I got a perm, like, <laughs> I'm got an album coming out called Original Gangster. Like, yeah, now they got me playing a cop and what shit. What the fuck? I was like <laughs> torn. But then I would tell my homies, I was like, yo, man, they want me to be in this movie playing the police. Word, could I be in the movie? That's all niggas <laughs> said. Yeah. See, the funny thing is playing a cop, no street cat has ever challenged it. Right. Because street cats get, you're getting a bag. Exactly. Street cats get that. Exactly. Squares are like, oh, you lost your hood pass. Like, nigga, you have no idea what a fucking hood pass is. Like, right. you, 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 you don't know. Like, the hood understands paper. They understand exactly. that. They like, yo, yo. And, and and selling out is snitching. I'm not a snitch. I'm right. not a rat. I'm not a real cop. Right. I'm playing one. Exactly. So, kiss my ass, right? <laughs> so anyway, I, I, you know, I do that movie. And the movie was successful. I made twenty three thousand dollars on a movie that made like eighty million. Damn! But I got a call to do Ricochet with Denzel. Yeah. yeah. And then I got a call to do uh, Surviving the Game. I remember that. That was a dope movie. Yeah. And yeah. then I got called to do Johnny Mnemonic with Keanu Reeves. And I did Tank Girl. Tank Girl was the first movie I got really paid. I got a million dollars to do, play a kangaroo. You know, and uh, I remember that. Right? I never seen yeah. that. Yeah, Tank Girl. You Google it. Picture of it when during the podcast. Show. You know what movie that I think I don't know if it was an independent flick. Mean Guns. Mean Guns. Andy. Andy. Yeah. I used to do sports cars yeah. movies. Co yeah. uh, court. I would. I would do a sports car movie. Would be like you call me. Yeah. And you say, Ice. Right, so I need you to be in a movie. I'm like, How many days? You say three days. I'm like, The new Porsche Turbo. Ah. I want that Porsche Turbo. <laughs> That's Bring that Porsche Turbo yeah. with the pink slip and the keys, and it, I'll do the movie. So, so I would be transfer a car to me. So I would get cars <laughs> for doing flicks. Like so, listen. The, the funny <laughs> thing about Mean Guns, but hold on, wait, wait, wait. You said you ne for uh, so for all of those though, you never read for right. any of them. That's crazy. No, it's kind of like this, right? Mm. Right. If you want uh, Ray J. Oh, let's name let's let's uh, Trey Songs to sing on a record, right? Yeah, yeah. You already know you want Trey Song to sing on the record. He doesn't have to come in audition to sing on your record, right? right. So once you get your work out, yeah. Johnny Depp does not audition. Brad Pitt doesn't audition. Mm -hmm. If we're doing a movie, we know Brad Pitt can do right. the job. So once you get enough work out there. Yeah. It's like if you were gonna cast me in a movie, you wouldn't make me read because you watch me on Law and Order every night. You yeah. like he you can know pull what it. You won't. Yeah, 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 he could do it. So by having New Jack City and all of a sudden a bunch of movies that were successful right yeah. out the gate, I've never had to read. That's dope. So, about but you that. understand why now, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you did. Well, good I mean, work. we was, we've interviewed a lot yeah. of actors and actresses, and we've talked to like Jasmine Lewis, who was the wife in Barbershop, mm -hmm. and we talked about like the different reads and everything. Yeah. So it's just interesting from jump because at some point you'd be like, well, maybe he had to read it at some point for something. Mm -hmm. But I get it because New Jack City was yeah. Well, I, I, I my first movie was a big, huge hit. Yeah. yeah. So the the next purple was like, yo, we want to try him, and and after a while, you see, one thing I learned is that. Everyone is watching everything. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm on Law and Order, Spielberg's watching Law and Order. Uh, 
I met Dustin Hoffman one day. He was like, Ice T. I'm like, how the fuck you know? Because we all live in the same world. Yeah. So I'm a fan of Brad, excuse me, I'm a fan of Brad Pitt, but Brad Pitt seen my acting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're all in the same kind of world. So, you know, there's four stages of an actor. Mm -hmm. Who is Ice T? Get me Ice T. Get me a young Ice T. Who the fuck was Ice T? <laughs> <laughs> so right now people are like, give me a young Ice T. Yeah. We need a younger Ice T. Yeah. Like who remember Ice? You know, so maybe that's Ti. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you did uh, the funny thing about it, going back to Mean Guns, I'm a gun dude. Just right, like right, you. right, right. I actually did uh, when I first moved out here. I was taking acting classes and mm -hmm. shit. You never took acting classes, huh? No. Okay, so my ass had to take an acting class, right? Nothing wrong with it. So, um, my the monologue that I did was from your your part in Mean Guns. Okay, yeah, the whole thing where you was like uh, telling them what was going on, any fucking problems? Yeah, that one. Yeah, and the motherfucker <laughs> said, he said, "What if we don't want to play?" You shot his ass. Right. He said, "Then don't." You know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Mean Guns was actually one of my little favorite indie flicks. I think a lot of you know some people slept. On Albert Pune did that. That was movies. a dope ass movie. That movie was shot in two days in L.A. County. Before the day, the day before the Twin Towers opened, mm -hmm. we were running all over the prison, all over the new county jail. I mean, acting. I, I worked with F. Murray Abraham uh, in Surviving the Game. He had just won an Oscar. Uh huh. He says, "I see. If you ever take an acting class, I'm like, no. He says, don't. Mm -hmm. It'll fuck with your mechanism. Mm -hmm. He says." You have the ability to listen to the words, make them sound real. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're, you're not intimidated by the process. Mm -hmm. uh, you you've taken acting lessons. You're, the the main thing you 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 learn is you must stay relaxed. Right. Exactly. You must stay relaxed. Even in a scene where you're you're uh, angry, mm -hmm. you're not angry. You're acting angry. Right. You know, you, if you're upset, you're not upset. You're Acting upset, yeah. so you have to be relaxed. Yeah, and, and and once you relax in front of these cameras and let it go, mm -hmm. uh, it'll come off cool. When you know you're in front of the camera and you start acting, you start sounding and looking <laughs> like it. Then, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just gotta let it go. Yeah. Be casual. When I first start acting, seem to be like somebody's outside. Go check. You know, check the back door too. I go. Somebody's outside. Go check. Check the back door too. Director go. Yo. <laughs> 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 that was fucking incredible, but that's how you just yeah. say the damn words. Yeah. It's just I remember I did a scene with with uh, Walter Hill in Trespass, and there's a scene where I come up these steps, and I got to tell Cube and everybody what to do. So it's like ten guys in my gang, and I got to tell them what to do, and then I got to rack a shotgun and take my coat off, and so I come up the steps, fuck it up. It's a it's a big crane. I come up the steps, fuck it up again. I come up. Now I'm getting nervous. Now I'm getting, now I'm really in my head. Yeah. So Walter Hill, one of the greatest directors, he directed The Warriors, The Long Riders, uh, uh, Last Man Standing. He goes, thinking too much. He says, you know all your guys' names, right? I'm like, I'm like, yeah. He goes, just come up the steps and tell them what the fuck to do, right? Mm -hmm. And I just came up the steps, blah, blah, blah. Court, take the body, move it downstairs. Mm -hmm. You do, blah, blah. and I just mm -hmm. rammed that shit off. The shit was damn near on script. Yeah. Because I now I'm not think, instead of thinking the words, I'm thinking, right. he said, just tell him what to do. Being in the moment. Yeah. You know yeah. what you gotta do. Yeah. Tell him what the fuck to do. And I did it. And that was one of the most important acting moments in my career when I just learned like how to act. Mm -hmm. Like know what the fuck you're saying. Right. If, if you know what the fuck you're saying, you might paraphrase it, but you'll get the point across. Right. So that's what you need to know is what the fuck you're saying first. Then the words get closer and closer, take after take, mm -hmm. you know. But like Law and Order is on script. Right. It's not like, oh, do you get to ad lib? <laughs> no, nah, it's network shit. What What was that's it like working with Cube? Cube is dope because, see, I love Cube. Yeah. I've been knowing Cube, O'Shea, mm -hmm. since Cube went to... Arizona University and Cube used to show up at my century when, when we used to play the, uh, the, the theater in, in Arizona that revolved and Cube would come back stay. I've been knowing Cube that long. Damn. And uh, I woke up to Ice Cube was straight out of Compton. Like when I knew, when they had CIA yeah. and they had all those other groups, right. but when Cube came across that mic said straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker, I was like, my niggas, 
he was born. Yeah. I was like, that's my yeah, nigga right hard. there. And 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 from that point on, I think Cube is one of the most eloquent lyricists. He's he 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 was the backbone of NWA, JJ Fad, all those groups, Easy E. Yeah. I remember he wrote lyrics for Easy. And uh he told me, he says, uh, in, in one of the rhymes, Easy says, Easy says, Ice Cube writes the rhymes that yeah, I say. say. Yeah. And Cube was like, I wrote that. I didn't expect him to really say that. <laughs> <laughs> but he said it. Yeah. You know, Cube's yeah. like, I didn't expect him to really say yeah. it. But working with Cube in that movie, we were both new jacks to movies, and it was both. I remember we were re- making that movie, and Cube was writing the movie. Mm-hmm. So both of us was on the same trajectory right. of expanding. Yeah. And uh, him playing Savon and me playing King James, it's really like how we are. Yeah. Right. Cube is the hothead, yeah. younger than me. Yeah. And I'm a little bit older and a different vibe, but yeah. it it's perfect. Right. It was dope. Yeah, that was a that dope scene movie. where me and him fight. Yeah. Like you gonna get his you fuck you. You know, yeah. you gonna move that that's really me and Ice Cube yeah. in real life. And uh, you know. What was it like working with Tiny? Because Tiny was a a, a a dear friend of mine. That was Tiny List brother. is just man, he's so missed, man. Mm-hmm. Tiny, man. I mean, you know, it, that whole movie was crazy because you got Tiny, you got Stoney Jackson, yep. you got uh, Glenn Plummer, Glenn Plummer, you got all these guys, and um, every night it was crazy because we shot it in Memphis and we shot it in Atlanta. The, every night at the end of the rap, there were all these chicks ready to take us out, yeah. and we would go out and we would party all night. And at some point, me and Q were getting dropped off at our trailer. Yeah, here's a funny story. Um, I won't incriminate anybody, but Cube had this bodyguard named a big. Uh-huh. I just said his name anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut it out. <laughs> but didn't do nothing. No one, no one, no one fucked nobody. But so t- basically, there was some girls. I think we were in Atlanta, and uh, there were these chicks that would hang out every night, get high, smoke all day weed and stuff, and bounce. Mm-hmm. So I would go to my room right because these chicks were around all the time. So I'd tell. So I started and I start fucking with. I come in there. I'm like, them bras is still around. Y'all ain't getting nothing. Them bitches is working. You niggas. You niggas is. At, you be looking bad on the L.A. Man. Y'all niggas is tricking real, real hard. Oh, you a rest haven for. Yeah, you rest haven. <laughs> so gets mad. He like, yo, man, fuck that, fuck that. So he calls the girl up. He goes, yo, 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 check this out. I want to. No, nah, no, nah, I can't hold on. No, bitch, you come over tonight. You fucking tonight is on. Don't come. No, nah, no, nah, I can't hold on. No, no. I'm going to tell you one more time you be sucking some dick. It's going to be going down. <laughs> Fuck that book. No, I can't hold. Okay. Uh, hello? <laughs> that was your mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> 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 he cursed some girl's mother out. Damn. <laughs> we just all rolled over the beds and shit. But we had fun, man. Did we moms had fun. pull up? Huh? Did the moms pull up? See, there you go. <laughs> with that 2021 bullshit. <laughs> the story ended there with a bunch of dudes just laughing like, make you, sure who's uh, on the line before you go into your check-in. <laughs> you know, the, fun, the funny thing about you and Ice to you and uh, Ice Cube is people would always confuse, the people that's not in the know would confuse y'all. That's cool. and, and the thing about it is you had a classic ass clapback. I'm not on Twitter, but I used to watch your Twitter because right. it was just fucking entertaining. Right. But some lady got on there and said something. She referred to you as I Ice, think, Cube. Ice Cube, and you just said, wrong Ice, bitch. Yeah, wrong Ice. That shit was <laughs> hilarious. I got a rhyme where I say, every day on the street, somebody calls me Cube. Mm-hmm. I tell them that's my loved one, but it's Ice T, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So Cube gets called Ice T all yeah. day. So we are used to it, you know? Yeah. And fortunately, we're friends. If we were enemies, that would be awful. Right. But we're friends. We're really good friends. And, um, you know, we motivate each other. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times people say, well, you're friends, but why haven't you guys recorded together? Like Dre's a good friend of mine. Dre's mm-hmm. never recorded me. Yeah. And they go, I'm like, sometimes that's how you stay friends. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I, that's more important to me than making a record with yeah. Dre, even though Dre is right now like punishing me like yeah. ice. I got to do something. I got to do something. I'm listening to Dre's music right now. He's mm-hmm. got, Dr. Dre's a monster. Yeah, for sure. 
I'm, I'm, I'm talking about he's working on something for Grand Theft Auto, but mm -hmm. he's also working on a project for himself. He'll do like 300 songs. Wow. Like, I mean, it's so much. I just wrote him out and said, man, you're stuck. It's just overwhelming. So you know? are we going to see, are we going to hear Ice T on the Dre beat? I mean, y'all should go here. That could happen. That, that could happen easy. You know, that could happen real easy. You know, I would love to get in with the doctor and let him produce me. Because see, Dre don't just put, you just don't get a beat. Right. He's a producer. He's going to produce you. Yeah. He's going to tell you how to say the words. Yep. He's going to change Big your, difference. change your flow up. It's a process yep. working in there with him. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Have you ever been produced as an artist? Or Yeah, you... I, I, I'm easy to produce. I work, I, I produce, I mean, I'm that guy that's in the studio and I listen to people, you know. I listen to everybody, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm, you know, usually when I'm working with good rappers, like I work with Smooth the Hustler, mm -hmm. I work with... I listen to their input. Yeah. You know, and then I'm that guy that does, usually when I do music, I'll do three versions. Mm -hmm. Just like I could do it laid back, I could do it more aggressive, and this, that, and the third. I like being produced. Let me, did let you me, did you ahead. record, though, mm -hmm. with Cube on the Pac record that y'all did? Yeah, me and Cube and Pac. Did you guys do that together? Yeah. Was that? Yeah, with Bobcat. Oh, okay. Okay. With Bobcat. And then I worked with Cube with Jinx. We did the Trespass song together. Oh, that's right. You know? But then I've been on songs with people that I've never been near. You know what I'm saying? I just was on the song with Nipsey uh, we did and stuff. Now, everybody, you just fly tracks in and out. Exactly. And stuff. You was on a song when I was a kid because I'm from SAC. Brother Lynch is from my area, and you was on that Brother yeah. Lynch song. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Apology. that. <clears throat> No, that it, but no it was the one you said, uh, I don't wear no Chuck Taylors. I don't sag my pants. Well, we but still I still hit the, still hit the, make the, make the six, six four dance. More niggas than me now than I had in the hood. Yeah. The fact that he oh, knows good. the lyrics to that, that yeah. was to the good. Sacramento was on fire Bitch, when you put baby that Baby Duck. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You heard the little baby scream in the background <laughs> on the headlight? Niggas wanted beef, now they, they want beef, beef no more. more. Yeah. He said, yeah. man, fuck this shit. Yeah, and I start talking shit, niggas. Y'all want to squab? Let's go in. Yeah. Lynch did that in my crib. Oh, did he? Wow. Lynch is ill. Lynch wants to eat people. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he's. I mean, look, I'm from SAC. We grew up on X-Rated. Yeah. Brother Lynch. Yeah. E-40 was like the dude to us who was the big guy, but we was in. And yeah, Lynch Hong. Yeah, but we I, was Sebo. Yes, yes. I, I, uh, it's an honor to work with them cats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's an honor, but you know, you got to pick they vibe up and rock with them. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I still connect with e, uh, Lynch Hong on Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask and he's you, right uh, though. Cocaine. I think cocaine was on the hook, right? Yeah. Wasn't I apologize for smoke yeah. uh -huh. on my mind. Yeah, yeah. That um <clears throat> was hard. do you think that uh who, who I, I'm assuming body count, do you think body count is more successful than Ice T? Musically? No. No. Nah. Mm -hmm. nah. It's just Ice T had a long run. So Ice mm -hmm. T, I had uh uh, seven consecutive gold and platinum albums mm -hmm. with Ice T. Body Count had uh, the first album went platinum. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any more gold records. Okay. So, but like we you were asking before about rock and roll, yeah. Body Count performs in front of a hundred thousand people. I saw. I that. can see it's that. Crazy. Yeah. So crazy. You know. Um, and y'all just won a Grammy last yeah, year. Yeah. Congratulations. See, hip hop <clears throat> has a has a problem. <laughs> We were just age. talking about this. Yeah. The first word in hip hop is hip. Yeah. And things only stay hip for five years. Mm -hmm. So hip hop kind of like eats itself. Yeah. It, you know, uh, Little Wayne's old. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It, 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 right. It, 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 at eat. like 35 or 36. Right. Or exactly. Yeah. Quick. Exactly. Now, I put out a record in my 60s. Instead of hip hop saying that's great, right. which gives everybody else a longer run, exactly. they don't understand that. Exactly. They don't understand that. When somebody like Big Daddy Kane drops a record, they should jump on that because that means that could extend their life. <clears throat> but they're just concerned. Now, the hip hop sweet spot mm -hmm. is 15 to 25. Right. That's when kids are in school and college and they play that song over and over and over. That's how you get all those streams. Mm -hmm. Once you hit 30, life kind of changes. Yep. And now it becomes into more adult hip hop. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Me, I was on every cover, every mm -hmm. magazine, me and LL, me and Q, me and Easy. I've been, I've done all, every publication, write on, all that. So you have to evolve. Yep. 
evolve or dissolve. The beauty of my game is my Ice T fans are SVU fans. The the people that loves me as a rapper are now grown, have kids, and watch me on That's television. It's probably the same demographic. It's the same. Yeah. So it's the mother. Who's like, I love you on SVU, but I was at them shows back in the day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't look like she might even have gray hair, but she's going to pull out the picture with her with the yeah. Adidas on. And they also kind of teach their kids, too. Like when their kids come out and say, little Winky is the shit. They're like, let me turn you on to SIBO. Let me yeah. turn you on yeah. to some some shit. With, you know. So the new is necessary. Yeah. But the, I think the key to evolution is is embracing your evolution. Mm-hmm. It's not trying to fight it. It's not Ice T trying to be twenty. Right. It's me just being the flyest sixty three year old nigga you ever seen. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and stay thin in the waist, handsome in the face. You know what I'm saying? Knock a bitch to a brick wall with this my motherfucking conversation. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> as long as you got that, that's a bar. So you say when I met Michael Franchise and he's seventy. <clears throat> yeah. I'm like. Damn, he don't look seventy. That's that's, crazy. that's fly. Yeah. So re 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 reassessing what what your life could be. You could look at me, <laughs> me. and say, "I used to sixty three. I'm gonna be like ice when I'm sixty. Right. Instead of exactly. worrying about what yeah. I look like when I was twenty three, because I can never be twenty three exactly. again. Exactly. But here's news for you. You want? How old are you? I'm thirty. I'm about to be forty. You're gonna want to listen. You're gonna want to be fly when you're fifty. Yeah. You're gonna want to be fly when you're sixty. Yeah. You're gonna want to be fly when you're seventy. I was in Miami with an eighty year old motherfucker on his yacht, and this shit was off the motherfucking chain. This nigga came out with the motherfucking open shirt with the box. <laughs> eighty years old, like this, balling, balling, <laughs> bitches. I'm like, nigga, it don't stop. It does yeah. not stop until you let it stop. Exactly. Now, this is what you don't want to be. Old and broke. Right. right. <laughs> you don't want to be old We're fighting and broke. That battle every so, time. so the bag I had, but listen, the bag I had in my twenties, I blew that dough. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I was able to extend my career. Mm-hmm. People like, oh, you sold all the millions of records. Yep, and I bought houses and I bought Bentleys and I bought all kinds of shit and I had a damn good time. But if all if that was all I ever made. Yeah. I wouldn't be living like we I'm all saw now. cribs. We saw the indoor pool and yep. the, the, but you but know, but, and but you 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 experience that. But yeah. that's money. That's trips with friends uh, right. and all that. So people think, oh well, you you can make it all in your like the, the cats right now. These kids that are making all this money in their twenties, it's difficult unless they're very shrewd yep. to ball like they're balling mm-hmm. in their forties. If they stop right now, right? Yeah. I don't give a fuck if you got ten million dollars. To stretch it, you got to be shrewd. Yep. You're an investor. You got to know what the Man, fuck you're doing. Listen, I made a lot of money in my in my twenties. Uh, I tell people all the time, anybody can get to the money. Yeah. But keeping it is a whole nother science. You know what I'm saying? Like I I fell off a couple times just learning how to keep it. Like when my know, rhyme says, it's, like, it's not the guns you got, it's how much you shot it. It's not the funds you got, it's how long you got it. Yep. So yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like holding on to it and staying cool and staying in it. It's constant work. Mm-hmm. And people say invest. Well, more pe- a lot of people have gone, just as many people have gone broke yep. from investing Hell yeah. as gotten rich from investing. Hell yeah. So you have to make smart investments. I had a couple million dollars in, re- in real estate in Miami. And when the bubble popped, the shit went upside down. Oh, yeah. I lost in that, too. I lost, like, <laughs> probably, yeah, a couple million dollars I had in Atlanta. Yeah. And I, I call up my guy who had sold me to real estate, and I'm like, yo, I'm losing all this money. He said, Ice, I lost $48 million. <laughs> wow. The, my, by my partner who had sold me to stuff. I was like, welcome to reality. Yeah. Welcome to the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Yeah, yeah. You know, my little money is nothing. Mm-hmm. He lost $48 million because he had more in. Yeah. So I my only my only uh success thing is I just keep hustling. Yeah. People say, why do you keep working? Because I spend money at an alarming rate. I like to, <laughs> <laughs> I like doing fly yeah. shit. I like I like I like Doing fly yeah, shit, having shit fly shit. Road. I mean, you a you a gun dude. Me and you, we sharing this. You know what I'm saying? What what is your 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 <laughs> your favorite? It's a whole table is a gun table. Yeah, right? well, we we all gun dudes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you let me ask you, if you had to go to war, right? Let's say close quarter combat, right? What would be the three guns that you would you would take? Oh, that's a good question, right there. Well, 
the fold out he just had? No, is, no we gonna yeah, we is, gonna get is, to the gift. Is it a, is it a, is it a matter of <clears throat> endless ammo? Is it you know a because, threat? No, I'm saying if it's a, a threat, you know, so you know they're coming. You got to get them off. Either you got to kill or be killed. You know, in that moment. And if you had three guns, probably a, just a regulation uh, 45. Mm -hmm. um, what model? What's the what's the classic model? Nineteen eleven. Nineteen eleven. Okay. Because you can drop that in the mud and it'll keep firing. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of the sexy guns, it stuff might misfire. Mm -hmm. And what I know from elevens, AKs, I mean, try yeah, we, to yeah, from what I know from military is you you, you do not want a gun to misfire. Mm -hmm. it's, that's the worst thing. So in 1911, that'll knock them down. It's not too. It's not too sexy. Mm -hmm. It's not exotic. I take a 1911. One of my favorite guns I have personally is a Kimber Compact 45. Okay. With the with the uh, laser on the side. Is that the polymer or the 1911 model? It's yeah. It's a little mini 1911, but okay. You you squeeze the handle and yeah yeah. I got one of those too. I know what you're talking. That's about. a pocket 45 because mm -hmm. a 45 you don't. You don't. You prefer forty five over forty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just a, I just like the traditional fact that that bullet is available and yeah. it it'll punch through most five. shit. Yeah. You know, I got FN five sevens and all those little yeah. cute sexy bullets <laughs> and all that old kind of shit. Yeah, you can't find five seven ammo right now. That's my point. That's why I spoke on ammo. Yeah. yeah. But if a motherfucker hits you in the chest with a forty five, yeah. this is rap. Period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 38s, 9s, all those, those are cute guns and all yeah. that. Um, as far as 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 as, as a rifle, uh, I'm more of an AR person than a, an AK person. Even though, once again, an AK could shoot underwater. Yeah, you know, and it's it's a big yeah. chunk, but it's a heavier round. The seven point six two. But the 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 AR is is much more. You can change it out. You can mm -hmm. you can you can adapt it. You mm -hmm. can put more things on the you rail. You can customize the shit. Yeah, you can AR. customize and stuff. Mm -hmm. I got a three hundred blackout that is a cool gun to suppress mm -hmm. because it has a low um, a, a subsonic bullet mm -hmm. that if you suppress it, all you can hear is the trigger pulling the spring. It's like tick, tick, wow, tick, 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 tick. that's great. Yeah, wow. a three hundred blackout. Mm -hmm. It, but that's another rare bullet. Yeah. So yeah, I was stick with AR, a, 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 a big forty-five, and a, a, a Benelli shotgun. Benelli. Benelli. I was gonna you say go wrong with the Benelli. Yeah, auto load yeah, a shotgun. Auto load, yeah. And that that's it. And you can get it in, you know. And then you need a, a when you you need a, a a samurai sword for when the motherfucking <laughs> you know when you run out of bullets and stuff like that. So so OG pulled up on us today bearing gifts. Well, oh, not yeah. a gift to give to me, but you know what I'm saying. What yeah, you brought, got there, OG? I brought I brought I, I, I'm 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 connected with this company out here uh, called Ammo AZ. It's mm -hmm. a, a a gun store. Mm -hmm. So they create different types of weapons. So this is a regular size like box you would carry pistols in. Right. But check this out. I thought it was a drill when you brought it. I was like, well, man, this we brought is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, I thought it was a drill. Yeah. Medium pistol case. But this is this is this is a cool little toy. And I don't think you've ever seen one of these. I got a uh I just got me a 6.5 Grendel. You up on that? This is an AR. Oh yeah. Face was it wrong? Yeah, you gotta pull it back first. That's a sum you assemble it. Now, why you would need this if you're not a hitman? <laughs> I don't know, but I just thought it was cool. So they uh designed this one. Did they design it for you? No, they designed them, but mm -hmm. I got one of the first ones. Okay. Nice. Oh, you got the body count uh, 30 rounds? Yeah, no, not the vending. Yeah, make sure it's clear. Yeah, yeah I'm going to just move my head <laughs> to the side. Mm. Oh, I'll, I'll... Catch me a Brandon nice. Lee over here. Yeah. There you go. And, uh, what type of stuff? What, what, what is, the, what is the red? Is that a red dot on top? Yeah, it's a red dot. Is it Romeo? You said what? I said, is it a uh, Romeo? What is the red dot? Oh, no, you talking about up here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's nice. 
Uh -huh, got the 30 round. Y'all see that? <laughs> you want to sell, sell, sell this, OG? No. You want to sell it? Come on, I cash you out right now. <laughs> it's Arizona. I, I could. Let me see that shit. I cash shit, you out right shit. now. Y'all only gonna I see this on, on holding court. You know I what I mean? It's just a gun podcast. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, that's easy right there. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I think the laser is on. I think the sight is on. Pull the covers off of it. Is there it five go. five six or two oh, two three? On. Have you have you scoped it in though? Have you taken it out and shot it? Uh yeah, yeah, it's five five six. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, OG. So now you know what I want for Christmas gift, homie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, but you, you go know. you go to the range often. Well, you know what it is. Coco's dad is a gun nut, mm -hmm. so he has all kinds of guns, and he's I don't know why he has so many guns. You know he he's one of them guys with ten fucking ARs. I'm into more exotic guns. I yeah. like cool things. I got, yeah. I, got, I, got a, I got a Vector. I got a P9. Uh, little Chris Vector. Those are the fuckers. Those they are look cool, hard. right? Yeah, yeah. like so from hard. Call of Duty. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I got I got that. I got um. Just other stuff. I like, like, I got a P90. I got a, um. The P90 is with the clip on the top, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the FN. I got one. Yeah. 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 You just, can only get 10 round sticks in California, though. Yeah. Because they, and it's a 50 round mag on top. But. Yeah, it's 50. Mine's 50. But you could get, so I kind of like, when I'm in Arizona, I can have fun with this stuff. Yeah. Because, you know, back east, you can't have all this stuff. So I come out here. Right. And stuff and get my little. Rocks. Oh, off. I know so, firsthand. You sometimes can't have we it. go to Scottsdale Gun Club. Yeah. Um, you know, we got the retina scanner and all that old good shit. Oh wow. So you go into the back area. So let me ask you, OG, why you trying oh, to shit. take down your AR. Oh, this shit is still back. Yes, go ahead. Oh who, yeah, who, I who, who's, it back. Who's Ice T's top five <clears throat> rappers? Well, my oh, top right. five aren't aren't top five aren't top five rappers, mm -hmm. but I I'll do top five influential. Okay. That influenced me. Okay. Because the top five rappers move around so much, but mm -hmm. I say the first person that inspired me the most was Melly Mel. Okay. Because that was the first person I ever heard put a message into a record. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, it was just party. party. Yeah. yeah. And then Mel put put messages in the records, and I was like, it, it, it opened my eyes to like you could talk about things mm -hmm. other than parties. Remember when I started rapping and I'm telling these stories, pre hip hop is only club. Hey, go out, throw your hands in the air, party, party, mm -hmm. party, party. Then Mel started telling stories and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is dope. It can, you know, so he opened that up to me. Um, my next person will have to be Chuck D. Mm -hmm. Because Chuck kind of made us all understand how proud we are to be black. Mm -hmm. uh, Public Enemy was a movement. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, like Griff and everybody on stage. It just didn't feel like music. It felt like uh, uh, just something that was more, it was big. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, just Chuck's voice and all that. And I toured the world with Chuck maybe five times. So mm -hmm. we're like brothers. But P.E., um, I think my next person that influenced me was Rakim. Mm hmm just because the way he laid his rhymes into the music so beautifully, it was like, made everybody try to rap different. You know, like, you know, when that nigga said, I take a phrase, it's rarely heard, flip it, now it's a daily word. I was like, you know, I tell you, I guide you out of triple stage darkness, you know, take you on a walk through hell, freeze your dome and watch your eyeballs swell. I was like, yo, this is some different shit, you know, <laughs> versus, so I, I was, I was impressed. He, he blew me away. Uh, too short. Mm -hmm. And only what made too short important to me was he was raw. Mm -hmm. And when I came out doing dirty records, short was up north doing freaky tales. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, on the you know, yep. and, um, you know, short's got a ABC style, just, you know, basic mm -hmm. rhyme and, you know, it's not <laughs> gymnastics or nothing. But it was so dirty yeah. and it was so raunchy yeah. and it was unheard. The only people that had ever done music like that would be Dolomite yeah. or, or, or Blowfly right. and right. shit like that. And just shorts irreverence. Yeah. Like, fuck you, bitch. Like, I don't. <laughs> like, like, it was just like, 
it was it he was, was also out the trunk with it. He yeah. was like starting his own movement. Yeah, he well, was. I met Short. I met Short when he was with a group of cats called Sixty Nine Girls, and I think they were some pimps. Oh yeah, when he did the blowjob Betty shit. And yeah. All that. yeah, and they were some players, mm -hmm. and they brought Short to my house. I was living in the back of a garage. I had a little single apartment, low key, like. I was in the apartment building, but you had to go past the washing machines and shit. And then I had a room in the back and uh, Hollywood. I was struggling back then. And then I met Too Short and they were like, look, you guys are, might as well just meet up, you know, better to become friends than to become competitors. And right. that's, and Short was young. Short, Short remembers he might've been 18, 19 years old. So, but Short's blatant, Aggression and just not aggression, just fuck fuck you ness. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Motivated so, me. So Mel Chuck um, short. The next will be Schoolie D, who really inspired Six in the Morning. Mm. Um, there would be no Six in the Morning or Ice T. Probably wasn't for Schoolie D. Prior to Schoolie D, I was rapping like LL. I, I, dog in a wax, you don't quit. I'm a better rapper. Yeah. And then I walked into this club and I heard PSK. And that shit came on. <laughs> PSK's making that green. People always say, I say, who is this fly ass motherfucker? Like <laughs> everyone was yelling on records. And he said, as for the ways you scream and shout, one by one, I'm knocking you out. And he said, put my pistol up against his head. Says, suck ass nigga, I should shoot you dead. I was like, this, who this, whoever this nigga is, he's the flyest nigga in the world. And uh, I researched <laughs> it, and he said, PSK is Parkside Killers. So I'm like, he's from Philly, but he's repping a gang. Hmm. <laughs> Six in the morning, police at my door. Ah. Fresh Shadita squeak across the bathroom Bad floor. floor. And that was the beginning of Six in the morning, done to the same cadence. I was about to say, it's a similar cadence. Yeah. Boys wow. in the hood are always hard. Yeah. Come talking that crash, it'll yeah. cool your car. It's like Cube said, that was Six in the Morning Part Two. Mm. So all three of those records came off or of PSK. PSK. Part three. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, PSK. So Schoolie D. Saw him at four, and I just wrap it up with Cube. Okay. I just wrap it up with Cube because uh, Cube's style is very e easily digestible. Like, yeah. like I say, I listen to lots of rappers, and it, it's it's a lot. But I like to hear what you're saying. Like Cube and Scarface have very similar styles. Yeah. It's just like it's digestible. I get what you're saying. I know what you're saying and stuff. Even though I'm a huge fan of Wu Tang fan. Wu Tang Clan, who basically rapped in code, right? Like they rapped in in the Wu slang, like you like. I what? never knew what the hell they was talking about. Yeah, I still yeah. listen to Raekwon. Raekwon, <laughs> yeah. you like you know Marshmallow <laughs> Wallabies, what, what, yeah. you know. Like, I didn't know what the hell them guys were talking about. Yeah, yeah, and then my bonus round would be Mob Deep. Okay, because Solid. Mob Deep took gangster rap to full blown, and when I say apolitical. That means non-apologetical. Like I'm apologetical. Like in my rap, I'll put a B side to it. Yeah. Mob Deep didn't. Mob Deep was like, and when you met Mob Deep, Mob Deep was little. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But cats. there was a mob of them niggas from from uh, you know, Long Island City, yeah. South Side. And when Prodigy and them sit niggas say that shit, you know, when you hear them, it sounded it was like, yeah. 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 And 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 this the gangster way that Alchemist produced the tracks and um, you know Havoc, and also the way that that Havoc and Prodigy's styles were so similar. Sometimes you wouldn't know which one was rapping. You yes, know sir. they go back and forth and stuff like that. But that's the done language. Them boys could talk that shit. Yeah. I still listen to Mob. Mob Deep is still my favorite go to group in my car. Wow. That's the, that's and you know, the to. thing is, the crazy thing is me coming from Kansas City uh, growing up, I never really got into the East Coast mm -hmm. sound. Um, I would say probably, you know, DMX, LL and um, Beanie. 
But Benny Siegel. That, yeah, Woo. Benny Siegel. Haney's a monster. But past yeah, that, I couldn't relate. Like, I, I, w- I was raised more on, like, when I'm young, I'm right, listening right. to you. Right. I'm listening to MC8, CMW. MC8, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to that type of shit. So that more resonated with me. And I think even musically, you know what I'm saying? Because West Coast, y'all started using, you know, chords and, and samples from funk and different things like that, where East Coast, they use a lot of break beats and it was right. very hip hop. Well, one thing that helped us, helped me sub, sub, not survive, but make it was realizing that. Mm-hmm. Like, the New York tri state had a lock on hip hop. So you had <clears throat> New Jersey, Philly, and, and New York. But then I realized that if you're not from those three places, you don't care. Right. So a kid from St. Louis doesn't care if it's New York or LA because he's from neither. Exactly. Exactly. A, you know, a kid from Atlanta doesn't care if you're New York, LA, because he's from neither. Mm-hmm. So we kind of one day we actually had a map of the United States and we circled the tri-state and we said the West Coast starts here outside yeah. of the circle. And we just said we'll just take every place else. Right. And when I would go to Detroit, they didn't care. They were just, just <clears> like, <throat> you know, uh, you know, when I'm in Detroit, niggas fight in mink. You know, like we would go to the different places. And I would, I would just go to every city and just like take me to your leader, who's the <laughs> toughest guy in your town. Right. I go to them, pay homage, and then I always had a security team. Like right. if I was in Chicago, the gangbangers would like got you ice. So I would never b- boss up in there like I'm the shit. Yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah, but checking it's in politics. Yeah, yeah wow. I believe in checking in. People yeah. that don't believe in checking in, well, that's them. I, I'm a, I'm Mr. Check in. Yeah. What's your opinion on the on the youngsters, the the culture now in terms of? I'm curious musically and just in terms of their get down. You know, just with the the social media, the violence. Just I the, I, I don't have any real opinion on them mm-hmm. other than I think social media has created a very dangerous playing field and a mm-hmm. a toxic habitat. Yes, you know. It's too easy to get on the internet and talk shit to somebody and threaten their life and you know and it's just it's just, see like if I dissed you back in the day, how, how would anyone know? Like they would only know if they wrote it in a publication. I can't just get on the air and rant right. about you when right. I see court nigga this that yep. and the third. Now, it's not as simple as blowing it off because you'd feel like a million people seen exactly. it. The insult exactly. is too huge. Yeah. It's too massive. It's not. Yeah. It's like a little kid getting bullied in school. Now they feel like everybody knows. Exactly. So it it it, it gets crazy. And now, like you see in these kids getting killed on IG live and it's just you're in another place. Uh, whatever's going on now, it will change and it will evolve. And like I said earlier, I've learned my lesson about my my uh, opinion on the music. It may not be my flavor now, right? But I still every once in a while hear a song that I like. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, I was driving home one night and I was trying to duck Drake, right? So Drake's on one channel. I changed the other channel. <laughs> I, Drake, I don't heard that song 50 times, man. Yeah. Give me something else. I went to the next channel. Drake's on that motherfucker channel. I went to the next <laughs> channel. Drake, I said, man, fuck it, Dan. I'm just Draking it home, I yeah. guess. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because this is what's happening. Yeah. It's right. music. It's radio. It's cool. Right. I don't know the person personally. I don't hate anybody. Yeah. See, I've taken hip hop for a ride that very few people will take it. So for me to be bitter, that's, that would be ignorant right. or to have a problem. I just want to see them get it and keep getting it and make some smart decisions and not die. Right. You right. know, like if I was able to navigate gangster rap, yeah, you guys should be able to pull this off, you know, mm-hmm. but it, you know, they, you get on there, you talk, the little girls are like, uh, it gets kind of, it, it gets, it's getting them killed. Yeah, absolutely. I think too, it's a breakdown. You know, a lot, like my generation, we defer to OGs. You know what I'm saying? Like, even like I was saying, when I signed with P in 95, you know, I, us coming from Kansas City, we ran our show. But once we got to the No Limit ship, mm-hmm. we did what he said. You know, we fell in line. You know what I mean? Well, you got to like, have people uh, around you, Court, that care about your well being. Yeah, yeah. You got to. Like I said, when I was in my situation, when I could have snapped, I had a group of guys like, nigga, stay in the house. Right. Like, you the golden hen. You're the right. one that's winning. 
Right. We got to protect you. I'll, I'll tell you, fun, uh, not a funny story, but I went to mi minister Farrakhan. So I go sit with Farrakhan and his, his son, Mustafa. You know, they got FOIs around. Mm. And I'm like, you know, I don't have security. He said, we're not protecting you for you. We're protecting you for us. Mm. And I'm like, what's that mean? He says, you're a leader. Mm. If, if something happens to Ice-T, who's going to take your place? We need you. Right. So we're protecting Real you shit. for us. Yeah. We, we, people, we need you. That point, mm. I, I understood security. Mm -hmm. I say, like, you know, so the homies will look at you and say, we got to look out for court because mm -hmm. court is the one that's leading us out of this shit. Mm -hmm. So my, I had homies that was like, uh-uh, ice, mm-mm, uh -uh, no, we got this, mm -hmm. you know? But a lot of these youngsters don't seem to have, like you say, that OG or that person that's like, yeah, take it easy, back off, stay away from this, yeah. don't get involved in that. And uh, But even when they get it, they don't receive it for some reason. It's a difference of, you know, like, like I said, my generation, generation, I think X, I think, you know, we were different, man. We could take the the message. Some people still got to learn it the hard way. Yeah. They got to learn the hard way. I was watching the young, one of the youngsters. Now the feds got him. Um, yep. Uh, what's the Which kid? one? Because it's, it's been about three or four of them just within the last three or um, four days. The kid that had, oh, damn. I sound old because I, I mean can't. shit. You got who? Rallo. I think well, okay, got... Rallo got crack. I know he's under, but what's the young scooter that look kind of like Miami of Pac, the younger one, the, the slim one? Oh, he shit. got the things in his head. Um, I don't know. What he got the dreads, the wigs? No, nah, no. Nah. He had like something happen when he was a kid. Oh, NBA young boy. NBA young. Boy. Yeah, yeah. They caught him running. They, I mean, right. And he and he, and I'm and he's hot. Yeah, super hot. He's like the top one. Yeah. 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 NBA young boy. He's yeah. hot. Yeah. Why are you in and he's in the feds? He's one of my favorite little niggas. Yeah. This one point. Yeah. But but it doesn't seem like no one's around him. <sighs> yeah, I, I I'm you know, I know his brother OG three, who I know personally. Okay. Um, you know, it's you can't tell them nothing, Ice. They they a different breed. It's it's I, I swear to God. But it's a, it's a it's gonna breed. be a it's gonna be awful <clears throat> with somebody that's that hot. Yeah. To not ride it out, right? You know, NBA young boy's supposed to be sitting here my age, like, exactly. yeah, man, I did that, and then I bought that hotel, and exactly. then I moved over here, and you know, yeah. I start. It's it's supposed to be. And that yeah. happened with the GS Nine crew too. What's his name? Yep, I mean, but they're yeah, back. Yeah. They're yeah. back just and, now, but they had to sit down for a decade. So, yeah. Well, that sit down is not a life sentence, right? Yeah. And they could have got it worse, but yeah. now watching Bobby Smurders moves. Right. He seems like he's moving a little different. Yeah. I seen somebody try to get him to do something. Hold, hold, hold up. I'm on yeah, parole. Yeah, on parole. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Stay out, brother. So I, that's all I care about. Yeah. I, I want to see these brothers prosper. I want to yeah. see them win. I want to see them make moves. I want to see them go on a ride like me. That's, yeah. that's you know, I, I, I became successful by wishing good for people. Absolutely. You know, I want to see people win. You know, I'm not... When I see somebody do good, I'm inspired. I'm yep. not intimidated. Exactly. I'm like, exactly. Get that money, man. Yeah. Do that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's something I could learn and how you played Absolutely. that out. So, you know, when I look at the youngsters, I just want them just to live, man. Yeah. What What's your plans now? I mean, what you got new going? Which What, what, what you man. got coming? Plans. I mean, we know you breathe. own, uh, year, you know, breathe 23rd in, year. Breathe in, SBU. breathe out. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just Body count torn. Yep, body count touring, 100,000 yeah. 100, in the crowd, trying Grammys, to, all that shit. You know, trying to stay healthy, trying to, you know, do my little, you know, calisthenics and mm -hmm. shit, staying, you know, uh, active. I'm boxing again. Okay. Uh, but, um. Any new projects? I, what new body count album? Okay. Merciless. Mm -hmm. Body count dropped carnivore last year and we didn't we weren't able to do one one show because of covid mm -hmm. we haven't performed one show tomorrow is our first concert so now the label's like give us another album i had to debate then we renegotiated and i'm gonna do uh one more well not one more but the next one will be merciless i got a lot of things i got a lot i got a lot of projects okay you know i got my tv shows different stuff i got two shows i'm working on in LA. Me myself though, I don't like to talk about things. Yeah. I like to slam the door on the way out. Master yeah. P probably taught you that. Yeah, for sure. Slam it on the way out. Don't yeah. because if you talk about it, you jinx it. Right. 
<laughs> jinx Excuse it. Me. So I like the shit to come on TV. That like, when did you have time to do that? Yeah, when did you it, don't want to telegraph. How did shit. that happen? I didn't know you were with it. I, I, I'm I'm in the cut working because if it fails, see, if you talk too much, <clears throat> m- most shit fails. Yeah, ninety, you know, shit just falls through. Yeah. So if you always project what you're gonna do, it'll seem like you're a failure. Like you're because, losing all the time. Yeah, yeah. So just don't talk about it. Just wait until it happens. Yeah. I even tell people in my crew, my business team, I'm like. Don't even bring it to me till it's damn near guaranteed. Like yeah. I don't, I, all that like <laughs> failure is so many, it's so much. We we get a T-shirt that says uh, uh, "Power by Hate" and it says one of my shirts. I have a, a line called "Power by Hate," mm-hmm. which means take go in the gym. You want to go in the gym? Go on the internet. Watch somebody talk shit about you, get your reps in. (laughs) Use that hate as energy. So it says, welcome to Hollywood. And on the back it says, by the way, the deal fell through. Wow. Yeah. So (laughs) You know how many times I heard that? (laughs) He works in Hollywood, so you know what that is. Right. So you know it's like you're talking about something that's not locked, greenlit, and actually on the air. Is yeah. stupid. I just had, I have a new business. So I have business partners, but then we were taking it. I own a studio in Burbank. Right. Uh, we have five sound stages. And like, I had one new partner that came in and this big deal fell through and it like crushed him. Yeah. And then he was like, what do we do? And I said, go get another deal. Like, what the fuck do you like? Right. Like, you know how many deals fall through every day? This was just your first one. Right. Like, so right. it didn't work. Uh, one of my models is, uh, 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 you have to notice that most things won't go exactly as planned. Mm-hmm. And in, in your ability to counter and make it work and adjust, if people, if you can't adjust, you're not going to make it. In this Absolutely. Way. Just I, like you said, okay, Ice, be here at 12. Yeah. He had to be prepared. Ice might call and say, I can't be there at 3. You have to be able to adjust. Exactly. Stay if you're like, well, man, I had 12. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, now my head is going to explode. Uh. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's always going to go. Yep. You got to be able to be fluid. I always say I started <laughs> 10 businesses in case nine of them fail. You know what I mean? So you always have to, you know, try to factor in the the, the shit. The shit always happens. Well, that's why I do so much. People say, mm-hmm. why you do so much? It's insecurity. Mm-hmm. It's not security. It's like as soon as I became successful rapping, I'm like, I need another hustle. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm doing good. I'm selling a million records, but I need another hustle. What's another hustle? Okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, now I need another hustle. I mean, just I just need yeah. something else to do to fill in my time speaking of hustles before we wrap up i just do want to shout out futuristic and in indie amplify oh yeah because sure. they provided us the space and he's he's you know a youngster and phoenix yeah, yeah, doing killing it this, well, this is dope wherever we at this is yeah, yeah. indie you know amplify so, yeah. in the building yeah, yeah so shout out to, to futuristic and the whole indie amplify crew thank you for the space it's yeah, cool so, so what i wanted so you know as he said in the beginning i i created this platform as basically, you know, I, I wanted to do like how Nori did. I wanted to bring on the OGs and celebrate mm-hmm. them, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm kind of in the middle. You know, I grew up listening to you. So I'm old enough to mm-hmm. where I have to make it my business to pay attention to the youngsters, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, go out of my way. But I'm still, t- you know, dialed in with who I grew up on. So I really just wanted to, you know, uh, man, I appreciate you for coming. I wanted to yeah. give you your flowers now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't bring an AR like you. You show up. <laughs> we with flew. AR, we flew here. We flew. So I have to give you flowers. You feel me? But I just—I don't know why I brought the gun. I said, "Okay, we're in Arizona. This is a clever little piece." I said, "Might as well just show it off." Yeah. Let's see. said, "Man, I hey. got something for you." Shout out to Ammo AZ. If you want one, go over there. Ammo yeah. AZ in Arizona, and they might be able. To, maybe out. they might say, "Nah, Ice got the only one, man." Yeah. I thought he was gonna bring out a case of money. As so I was like, "Damn, yeah. OG, really?" You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. That, that would have been. That would have been. Nice. Nice. That, that would have been, been player too. You know what I'm saying? Next but, time. But the yeah. fold out AR is pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah it's pretty. Yeah, I figure, oh shit, yeah. he know the affections of my heart. Fuck. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to give you flowers, OG. I appreciate you. I appreciate, you know, the the brotherhood that I feel like we're cultivating, you know what I'm saying? The game that you've given me in conversation. Um, I've literally watched you since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that knows me, you have to talk to my old lady and uh-huh. people around me. They be like, boy, this nigga, when he start talking about you. I've learned from you for so many years. A lot of um, 
That's the only artwork yeah. I I seen in that yeah. house. Yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? That I literally, and, and so Jay like Prince's said, book, right? And Jay Prince's book. But I literally see you every day of my life for probably like what ten years. Or that it's that been shit. a long time. Yeah. yeah, I got both of them, big as hell. In my so house. that would have been the ultimate fuck up if, if Court called me and I was an asshole. That would have been the ultimate <laughs> hey, fuck up. OG. Hey, sometimes <laughs> don't, don't meet hold your on, idols. Hold on, don't bro, meet bro. your idols. I'm glad you said it, so I didn't want to say it. Right. Oh man, I told my old lady. I said, "Damn, babe," I said, "I'm nervous," and she said, "Why?" I was like, you know, I don't get nervous around niggas. I, you know, I right. been in, you know, right, 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 right. Like, but I said I'm nervous in case this motherfucker is an asshole. I was like, you know, I've been <laughs> See, watching I did, this I didn't for say it. Years. I didn't say it earlier, but this has been my dog for more than two decades. <laughs> right. When I said that he act a certain way, it's because when we move through life and we talk to certain people, he be pulling me to side like. This bitch ass motherfucker. Yeah. And he be yeah. feeling some type of way. And yeah. I be like, hey, man. Yeah, he be having to talk me down on it. Some down. niggas is corny, man. Yeah. yeah. Some niggas is yeah, corny. He had his idea of them, but when you meet him, and I, he knows a couple of them, I be like, man, this bitch ass nigga, I've been, <laughs> I've been listening to this nigga my whole life. I should have slapped this nigga, you know yeah. what I mean? But there's been so, a couple of instances. So I was it's like, man, couple. I've been literally why, and I was like, damn, I don't want to have to come home. And take the paints down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But nah. man, it's been you know I might been, put I might put two of in my house you know now. You've been you've you been one hundred with me, and and you know for me it's an honor, bro. Like for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you don't talk to everybody, and but you, you know, didn't have to do it. Your, you know? your reputation precedes you, you know. So no matter who you think you are, people mm -hmm. know who you are. Mm -hmm. So I could think I'm the coolest motherfucker, and people say Ice is a sucker. So, you know, to have it out there that, yo, go talk to Ice, Ice is cool. That's important mm -hmm. to me. And also, this is how you give back. People are always like, well, how are you giving back? You giving back money. The best thing you can give back is the game. Thank you. You give back Absolutely. the game. If I'm giving you the game, Thank you. if I'm sitting Thank here you. telling you, look, I'm Thank in the you. street like you, doing all this shit, mm -hmm. and now you look at me and I'm still the same nigga. Yep. See, that's the thing. Like, they like, well, you squared up. I'm like, yeah, to an extent, but I'm still the same dude. Mm -hmm. I'm just, just, I just learned different flavors, mm -hmm. different levels. I always tell you, I'd say, I say, if a serial killer became a florist, right? Mm -hmm. Is he a florist or a serial killer that just likes flowers? I want to go back to that because given the game, given the game, um, you, and I'm sure you've went through this over the years. You from LA, no matter what you've done for your community, you know, be it artists for the street, for the community, it's never, you're never going to please everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, me from being from Kansas city, you know, we've, we haven't had really anyone, you know, come out of there except tech and strange mm -hmm. in terms of on a very big level, very successful. I mean, we've had a few others, but mm -hmm. mainly tech, um, <clears throat> because of my position with, no Limit and Master P and the, the success I've garnered and, you know, the films and shit I've done. A lot of the Kansas City, they get mad at me because they feel like, you know, oh, Court, he's always just talking. He's always just trying to talk and give us the game. Yeah. They they literally like, yeah, he just talk. He don't, what he didn't do, who, what money he didn't put in somebody's pocket. What, you know, they want you just to give them something. And they don't understand the value is in the information. I'm teaching you how to fish. I mean, because I, mm -hmm. I told niggas, I mean, if you want to be my bitch, just say so. You know, you want me to just give you some money? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Come tell you what to do. And because at that point, I own you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what you just said was gold in terms of how valuable the information is giving game. The game is the value, not just putting some money in somebody's pocket. How come know. they don't get that? I never really had. Uh, that's one thing. I don't know. Maybe Kansas City is a different type of mm -hmm. place. But I've never really had that put on my head. Uh -huh. Like I ain't giving back to LA. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. Well, not. Uh, let me clarify. Not that I'm not giving back. Mm -hmm. They want. They, they they want money. They, they yeah. They don't want the information. I've had that. From, not everybody, but I've you know had what that I'm from sideline niggas. You know, <clears throat> yeah. I've had that from. I've had that from cats on the sidelines. Yeah. Coming at my boys. Yeah. Like oh yo 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 ice got this why you don't got that. And my boys would politely tell him, shut the fuck up. Right. You know, you don't know what ICE has done for me. You exactly. don't know what's going on. Exactly. You're not in here. Because they on the outside looking in. Absolutely. Uh, people will say, well, ICE, you know, you ain't getting enough credit. I'm like, well, you want people to carry me around? I got enough credit. I get credit from, you know, LA gives me the props. They like, ICE helped put the West Coast on the map. Right. right. Broke. Um, I've done my charities. I've had my... Save the Babies Foundation, uh, South Central Love Gang Foundations, yeah. things like that. People just want money, though. Yeah, that's just corny. 
Yeah. That's yeah. just corny. It's like there's no amount of money you can give that's going to solve a problem unless they understand how that money has to be used exactly. and how it has to be, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I've given a lot of money out to people that didn't appreciate it, didn't respect it, and they're still in the same position. Exactly, because they didn't do their part to understand it. They, to they, understand they're, they're the, they're the still, lesson. And, and you know, yeah. I mean, just handing you, I, I could talk to a guy and be like, yo, man, Ice, man, I need this to start a business, this, that, and the other. And you give them the money, and they don't start the business. Right. They go out and buy a car, watch, whatever. Yeah. You know, so it's like, but my thing, I, I, I would always tell people that I would say, "Yo, at least do what you say you're going right. to do." That's the problem, right? though. There, there's, there's a million good ideas. Right. There's not a million people that execute. All Execution is everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, but I'm saying just like how you said that was that was prophetic. What you said, just in terms of how important the game is. Like, why don't why don't people? I guess it, it ain't in them. It's on them. Like, you have to understand. The game is that's what that's the value. The value, yeah. Is the game. And the game is. I to mean, be you got to think. You gave me game through records and just you didn't even know me for years. And, and, and court, I was they able say to take that. The game run. is to be sold, sold and not, not told. told. Yeah. And I say I should be taking a collection, but right now I'm making an exception. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I should be getting paid for this good yeah, game. Real shit. And in real life, you're gonna have to pay for the game. If you if you talk to yep. somebody that went to college yep. and they got their doctorates or PhDs or whatever, and you ask Ask them for information. Trust me, they're going to make exactly. you pay to learn this, that. They're not just going to exactly. tell you. Exactly. But oh. see, that, that, that's when motherfuckers respect something. Because, like, I try <laughs> to give a lot of game, right? And I say, because I'm giving it for free. But they don't start, believe it's real. They don't believe it's real. But if I start saying, okay, nigga, I got a gold package, a platinum package, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this I'm, is what me and the going to respect Maybe something. that's what you should do. Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should do. You should say, "Hey, I'm man, of course, college. We're gonna get you together. <laughs> we're just gonna put the whole this. podcast behind a paywall." Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, right. and they'll. Re but he's right. They'll respect it yeah. if they have to pay for it. Yeah, if yeah. I tell you something right now, and it's, I'm like, "This I learned the hard way," motherfucker will be like, "Yeah, whatever. They won't take it." But see, this is the difference. See, you're a real live player, mm -hmm. so you. You search game. Yep. I'm going to listen to other yep. people talk. When I'm listening to Damon John, who's a close friend of mine, or I listen yeah. to Master P, or I listen to anybody, I'm sucking up the game. Exactly. Some people are just denying it. They don't want to hear it. They think they know better, and yep. they're always going to be dumb. Yeah. It's just that's it. I'm going to give you some game, and you pay attention exactly. or not. You know, like I tell her, if it seemed like you running in circles, it's probably because you're cutting corners. Now, you, put, take, <laughs> you can take that any way you want. Yeah. But I'm really telling you, if you don't follow through with everything yeah. you should do, exactly. you're going to end up back here. You, you, have to, yeah. you have to hit all the points that are necessary to yeah. solve this equation. You can't like, oh, I'm going to not do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going a, I'm to a cheat. If, 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 if court tells you how to go in the gym and get your reps, oh, I've seen what he said. But I'm going to do a little different. You're not going to get the same result. <laughs> right, right. right, right. <laughs> That's well. exactly. You can't yeah. cut corners. Follow yeah. the instructions. I'm going to give you the instruction. Yeah. You know? But anyway, man, you know, it's always a treat when players meet. Yeah. It's always hey, a always, treat. Always, always. <laughs> but, man, I done gave you your flowers, OG. I ain't going to keep you no longer. I appreciate you coming to the whole yes, court podcast. This was, like I said, it was on my bucket list. This is uh. You it's know, a twenty four hour podcast. <laughs> you know, I yeah, uh, two and a half. I'm, yeah, I'm honored, brother, and I'm not just saying that lightly. You know, I know yeah. a lot of motherfuckers in the business. But we gonna stay, around. we gonna stay connected because oh, yeah, sure. you know, Snoop told me the one way to make a friendship greater is get some bread together. You, you know, so, so OG, you already know I've been <laughs> on you about that. Right. Stuff. So we we will find some way to yeah. also yeah. you know make some loot yeah. and stuff. Cause I, I like your energy, I like your vibe, I like everything, you know the way you present yourself. That's paramount in me fucking with people. For sure. Because people bring me the best business ideas and all this shit. I'm like, I don't really like dude, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know? real talk. And I don't, need the, I don't need that particular bag. I'd rather get a bag over here with somebody I like. Exactly. You know, so I don't, I, I'm not vibing dude. He's mm -hmm. too arrogant. His attitude is something just, I don't like it, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't need those people in my circle. So everyone around me, I like mm -hmm. at this point. See, that's how he navigated Hollywood. Right, right there. there. He just said there, there was the song. He just said, I don't, I don't need the bag over there if I don't fuck with him. Real shit. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time since I needed any real particular bag. Even though certain people will wave one in my face, I was like, shit. I just had to go secure a bag in, in, um, in um, L.A. for, I had a tie commercial. I just did my, my operation. And I, I had been doing a Thai commercial with Steve Austin. 
and I was worried whether I was going to get healthy soon enough. And I was, I was suffering as a hustler. Like, yeah. look, man, this money yeah. <laughs> needs to be picked up. Yeah. <laughs> I can't lay here in the bed. I was trying to get healthy as a motherfucker. Yeah. I got my ass out there. I limped my ass out there. <laughs> Have you seen the meme? I think I sent it to you uh, about they said why I feel like Ice-T punking me into getting car shield. <laughs> like, the way I'm talking like about car shield. me every time it come on. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, on an endorsement tip, I mean, just just to wrap it up, mm -hmm. I was uh, watching a football player, and the football player said he had never spent any money he made in the NFL. Yep, oh, I know exactly. Yep. I know, yep. I know. I heard that too. And I was like, <laughs> game, yeah, game. game, right? Game, exactly. I need to get some endorsements, man. Yeah. Let's get that cracking. So I, my manager was like, "What you?" I said, "I need an advertising agent." Mm -hmm. You know, there's agents that just deal with advertising. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they send send out. Um, your your name first. First, I was too taboo because of Cop Killer. No one would fuck with me. Right. So the first person that bit was Geico, mm -hmm. and I did the iced tea commercial, mm -hmm. and everybody in the advertising world did like this, and it was no blowback. Mm -hmm. Everyone thought it was funny. Yeah. Everybody liked it. Yeah. And then you know now with an ad agent, they go out and they they seek out different places mm -hmm. and they bring it to you. And then you're like, nah, that's corny. That don't match. Car shield match because I'm in the car. Car right. So I'm like, okay. But then um, uh, you can get a lot of money if you'll do shit for like anal leakage. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna see iced tea on the on the. Anal. Nah, I pass on that one. Yeah. You buy a jet, you do anal leakage. I'm like, it's bad enough. I'm walking down the street. People are like, hey, lemonade, lemonade. But hey, leaky ass, <laughs> leaky ass, nigga. Like, nah, I pass on that one. So you pass. So when the tide came, I was like, what do I got to do with soap? Yeah. And they were like, well, it's cold. It's washing with cold, cold water. Your name's Ice, and we got Stone Cold Steve. I'm like, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, you I'm a cold, cold motherfucker. Y'all, y'all a good match. I like that. Yeah. I so see the ad things, you gotta pick and choose. You know, no matter what you pick, somebody go, oh, I don't like car shoes. That, that, yeah. That's that's irrelevant. Yeah. It's it's more like you trying to find things that fit. And the fact that like me and Snoop are now part of Americana, mm -hmm. to where you see Snoop with Martha Stewart. Mm -hmm. Out selling big lighters. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. This that's nigga crazy. Snoop's a monster. Man, He's doing Corona and all that. But that, think of it. We were gangster rap. Yeah. And yeah. now we're America, and we're just part of it. And that's because our fans have now grown and become mature and are not afraid of us. And I, I would say you guys are more than that, man. It's international. Yeah. Like I. But it's over a period of time. We're yeah. the same motherfuckers that had people terrified. Yeah. You know? So now we they understand that, like, yo, we just stating our opinion. We ain't trying to hurt nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So let's go have some uh, Doritos. <laughs> it's all good. That's it. Well, shit, Ice, man. I, I appreciate you coming, man. I'm going to let you go, OG. You okay. know what I'm saying? Hopefully, I, today I didn't have to use my AR. It's been a good day. All right, OG. All right, peace. All right. All right. All right.